glory days, they'll pass you by in the wink of a young girl's eye. Senior night here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Welcome to Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. College football primetime on ESPNU. A Division I AA showdown. North Carolina A&T, the Aggies, playing host to Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Both members of the MEAC, the Cats 2-2 two and two in conference play, hoping to keep the Division I AA playoff chances alive. The Aggies at 2-3 and three, trying to stop a two-game losing streak. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, along with former UCLA Bruins star Charles Arbuckle. Glad you could join us on magnificent night here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Bethune-Cookman, the Wildcats, they play an exciting brand of football, something called the Wyatt Bone, which we'll explain in just a moment. But they are led by a spark plug, five inch, nine inches tall, named Jimmy Russell at quarterback. Mike, he is awesome to watch because he does so much with the football. He handles it on every single play out of that attack, but also he can get down the field. You can see him with the nice moves down the field, but he has to have good decision-making skills and the ability to get in and out of holes. Now watch this move here. This is what you want to see out of your quarterback going downfield. However, when you need to throw the football, he's accurate enough to get the ball to the right receiver. The thing with Jimmy Russell is he is so effective in what he can do with the football, both with his legs and in the air. He's got great leadership skills. On the other side of the football, North Carolina A&T, pretty sound defensively, but offensively they're downright anemic. That's why they need a big game from their running back, Brandon St Sweeney. Sweeney. We have to call his name a lot tonight. Brandon Sweeney has to have a good game. You can see against Morgan State a few weeks ago, 205 yards. This has been an anemic offense at AT. They need for him to have a big game. He is the cog tonight. Is going to stir their, stir their drink on this night. Moments ago, we had a chance to go to the AT locker room here on senior night. This was a scene. You're excellent football team. All you got to go out and do is be disciplined. Carry out your assignments and win this football game. That's all. That's all. If you do that, as a team, you'll come back and get victorious. We're not going to wait until the second. It shouldn't come down to that. College football primetime. Bethune Cookman taking on North Carolina A&T from Aggie Stadium here in Greensboro, North Carolina. As we said in the opening, it should be a very emotional evening, Charles. 22 players playing in their final home game for North Carolina A&T. Well, Mike, you can hear the Aggie pride call. So these guys have one more time to come and touch and touch this field and get an opportunity to do something there. You can see also Bethune-Cookman very ready to go as well. There's George Small, the head coach for North Carolina A&T. Just two seasons ago, he led the Aggies to a MEAC championship. This year, he's found the going a little bit rougher on the other side of the football field. That's Jeff Fagan, the running backs coach for Bethune-Cookman. And right there is George Small. That's C. Angelo Wyatt, the assistant head coach. There's Jeff Fagan, the running backs coach for Bethune-Cookman. Bethune-Cookman won the toss. They have deferred to the second half, so a and will receive the football. Back deep, Quante Spate, as we look at Alvin White, the head coach, in his ninth season from Bethune-Cookman. He was Deion Sanders back in his day, and he is dressed like <laughs> He is still prime Deion time. Sanders. We're prime time, right? Yeah, we are at prime time. <laughs> oh, man. Jazz Dawson, back deep as well for a and <laughs> Chaz averaging 21.5 yards per kickoff return. He's got a long of 44. Joseph Arroyo kicking our uh, Jesus Cortez kicking off for Bethune Cookman. And we are underway here at Aggie Stadium. Oh, 
Fuente Spate, number 39, with the kickoff return. As we look at Marshall Glenn, the senior quarterback, 6-3, wasn't scheduled to start tonight, but because of an injury to Rico Watkins, the starting quarterback, a hamstring injury, Marshall Glenn pressed into service. He has played quite a few snaps this season, 30 for 60, two interceptions, just one touchdown. A good leader, but he doesn't have quite the arm that Rico Watkins does. Been the quarterback and played wide receiver. Now he's back at the quarterback position. He needs to generate some offense for this Aggie team that was shut out a week ago, 16-0 by Howard. And they go to the running game right away. Brandon Sweeney, the man we talked about in the opening, number 20, the ball carrier. Stopped by Donnell Livingston. Offensively for a and the backs and receivers, Brandon Sweeney. He's their big gun. William Short starts tonight at fullback, a former linebacker. Doug Brown and Brandon T Trusty, the wide receivers, and Brian Johnson, the tight end. Up front, John Cato, Christopher Gates, Terry Jones, Christian Hill, and Walter Stiff, the linemen for North Carolina a and Sweeney gained four in that first down play, second and six. Aggies have them out their own 36-yard line. Bethune and Bethune Cookman calls a timeout. Kind of unusual, huh? This something early in the game, Charles? Didn't like something. Had to go right away to make sure to call the timeout to make sure to have the right personnel in the game. Charles Arbuckle, I know you've studied this night and day for the last couple of days. Your keys to the game. Well, if you look at Badoon Cubman, they have to protect the rock. When you have an option offense, you have a tendency to put the ball on the ground quite a bit. Defensive pressure. When you have a new quarterback like Marshall Glenn coming in, you want to stop him from really getting off. North Carolina AT run, Brandon run. You remember that with Forrest Gump. Brandon Sweeney has to have a big game. Curb your enthusiasm for the defense of North Carolina AT. They have to play passive and they have to play aggressive at the same time. I know it's a misnomer, but they have to do it against this op option offense. And there's Alvin Wyatt, former member of the Buffalo Bills and Oakland Raiders, a four-year NFL veteran. You know, for 17 years, he was also the women's basketball at Bethune-Cookman College. He is quite a motivator, quite a colorful character, as witnessed by his, his outfit tonight on the sideline, not your customary coach's garb. Second down, six for the Aggies. Sweeney trying to get the ball off before. Gives again. Sweeney on the carry. Defensively for Bethune Cookman up front, Dennis King, Donnell Livingston, Ramon McCullough, and Terrence Cato. The linebackers are Rodney Hughes, Torian Charles, and Kavari Daly. And the secondary, James Mons, Travis Rowland, Bobby Williams, Division I AA interception leader, and Larry Summers. Torian Charles, the middle linebacker for Bethune Cookman. This time, Glenn decides to pitch the ball, and they've got the first down, so it's a good start for the Aggies. North Carolina a and running their option of their own, and that's a good play. Even though you see it if you're Bethune Cookman, you know North Carolina a and doesn't run it as much, but this is a good play. Not a great read by the outside linebacker, and no one to protect the running back. That's where the keys have to be. You can see coming in late is Christoph, Christopher Robinson, who probably had pitch responsibility, but was late getting there as nope. the outside linebacker. Yeah, number 57, Rodney Hughes, got caught in no man's land, and as a result, the Aggies pick up their first first down of the game. Glenn gets it outside to his wide receiver. Brandon Trusty, and that makes it 22 consecutive games and dating back to 2003 in which Trusty has caught at least one pass. Nice sure tackle by Travis Rowland, just coming up strong safety. Plays almost like a linebacker. He really gets in there, has 12 tackles for losses on the year. That just tells you he likes to get close to the ball, a little nosy, wants to get in the backfield. Sometimes that can hurt you in a play-action pass game. Perfect name for a receiver that uh, catches the football as regularly as Brandon Trusty does. Marshall Glenn certainly trusts number three, that's for sure. Sweeney the lone setback, and he's tackled immediately in the backfield. Brandon Sweeney on the carry. 
the Raymond McCullough right yeah. there on the tackle. So look at the start tonight. This looks a little different because you have number two and you're used to seeing that at <laughs> skill position, guys, but the pressure inside. You see Big Two getting in there, gets blocked, but just comes off the block, sheds it perfectly. That's how defensive linemen are supposed to play. Get off those blocks and go and get the tackle for a loss or a short game. McCullough, a 300-pound senior from Daytona Beach. North Carolina A&T, you can see their third down conversion rate this season, not exactly exemplary. Glenn, he's trying to set up the screen pass. This takes a way too long to develop. He has to throw the football away, so the Aggies will have to punt. Pressure provided there by Terrence Cato from Bethune-Cookman. Well, Dennis King did the right thing. He knew he couldn't get to the quarterback. So what he did is held up the running back in that play just enough where it wasn't holding, but enough so uh, Brandon Sweeney couldn't get out for the screen play. Corey Council. Corey Council back yes, deep for Bethune Daly, back deep the wild, yes. Gets across the 10 to 15 yard line and knocked out of bounds at the 20. He's forced being stopped by number 16, Brandon Long. We're just underway here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Nothing, nothing. Bethune Cookman and AT. Margie Machine, the North Carolina AT band, up in arms here for the game against Bethune Cookman. Final home game for the Aggies this year at Aggie Stadium. And Bethune-Cookman College goes on offense for the first time tonight. And it's our first opportunity, Charles Arbuckle, to take a look at quarterback Jimmy Russell, Russell and how he runs the Wyatt Bone. Razzle-dazzle right off the bat. Jonathan Summers, the wide receiver, gets it on the reverse. But the a and defenders able to sniff it out early. Number 94, Ricky Lewis. We're going to hear his name called a lot tonight because he is the real deal. Offensively for the Wildcats, the receivers, running backs are Eric Weems and P.J. Smith. Jonathan Summers, the man on the reverse there. Victor Johnson, Koya, Koyla Daly. Tight end up front, offensive line, Johnny Santiago, Fred Nolan, Vernon Edwards, Rayondo Lee, and Terrence Massey. The give inside. Or so I thought, but the pitch to Richard Woodbury. You and the defense both thought that was the case, right? <laughs> Defensively for the Aggies, three-man front, Larry Harrison, LaShawn McLean, and Ricky Lewis. Montre Jackson, Shamar Milton, Monte Daniels, and Orlando Norman, the linebackers for a &T. Thomas Johnson, Billingsley, McBride in the secondary for North Carolina a &T. Russell again, taking a long time to pitch that ball, and you can see what you were talking about early, Charles. One of their propensities is to put that ball on the ground, especially the way Russell was cavalierly holding it that time. Well, the way you handle the ball, you have to give it to the fullback fake, or you give it to him, and then you have that option to come down the field. You also want to try to pitch it. So the thing is, if you're a defensive guy, you want to make sure if he has that ball free, you have stronger hands than the quarterback. You try to knock it out. Lando Norman, the man who made the last tackle for a &T. Second down and five, Wildcats. Russell to Summers. A gain of three. Knocked out of bounds by Theron Thomas, number four, the first defender to reach him. Theron's dad, Thomas Sr., is the equipment hit man here at North Carolina A&T. Kind of an all-in-a-family kind of deal. Anytime you got MEAC games or SWAC games, you see a lot of that. You do, Mike. And I think the one thing right there you saw right away, they're throwing the football. Jimmy Russell can put the ball in the air. What you have to do with North Carolina A&T is make sure that you pressure him when he's running with the football. You hit him as hard as you can and as much as you can so when he drops back, drops back the throw, he doesn't have the energy to get there. Third and short. P.J. Smith, the starting fullback, goes to the house. Well, 
Eric Weems is the A-back. PJ is the B-back, but he wants to be the A-guy there. He stepped out of bounds. But what happens is you see, watch how the defense goes inside. Now, you make that move right there, 26, Wilfred Billingsley. He misses that tackle that he has to make as a strong safety. Fortunately for a t there's someone down the field to stop. 26 is turning, trying to get there. When you make that decision and angle is wrong, you're not going to catch. P.J. Smith. Well, P.J. Smith stepped out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Nevertheless, a gain of 43 yards, and Bethune-Cookman in great shape at the A&T 10-yard line. Again, they fake that handoff inside. This time, they give it to Weems, who bounces outside. Knocked out of bounds at about the 2-yard line. You reef it. I tell you what, it is, especially from our angle, we're not as customarily as low as this in the stadium. A little difficult to see sometimes. Imagine if you're an A&T defender trying to stop this Wyatt ball. Well, you can practice all week and you can do everything else, but until you get there, you just really don't understand. And I think that's the key. As a defender, you're just so worried about, okay, I need to make all my keys and all my reads right. And by the time you've thought of it, they're going by you. It's too late. Ricky Lewis and Shamar Milton were the linebacker and defensive end for a were talking to us yesterday about assignment football and not being tempted to go for the wrong man. That's P.J. Smith carrying it in for the touchdown. And Bethune-Cookman, it didn't take him long. They are on the scoreboard first here. Mike, that was just power football. <laughs> you know, that was just a nice drive of putting the ball on the ground and not allowing a t to do anything defensively. You know, you have to stop this inside. But their line, come look, the, the, the white jerseys push back to the end zone, the A&T defensive line. And if you have that kind of push, there's going to be six points and big games all night. On to attempt the extra point, Jesus Cortez. And he is perfect. Extra point attempt is good. Some great upfront blocking by Vernon Edwards and Rayondo Lee, 55 and 71 respectively for Bethune Cookman College. The result, a touchdown by TJ PJ Smith. And the Wildcats have taken a 7-0 lead here early in Greensboro, North Carolina. On their first drive, Bethune Cookman, the Wildcats running the triple option, the Wyatt Bone to perfection. Charles Arbuckle. We're going to highlight Wilfred Billingsley, the strong safety right there. 26 has to make this play on the third and one. If he doesn't, you see everybody's on the line. Watch the angle that he takes. Go inside two steps. You're outbeat. You cannot run as quickly backwards as you can forward. When he doesn't make that tackle in that hole, P.J. Smith almost scores a touchdown, steps out at the 10. But you can see right there what the option can do to you. You're so worried about that dive back or the quarterback that if you miss that read, it can be a long game. And P.J. Smith with that long braid. Capping off the seven-play, 82-yard drive. Monte Spate and Chaz Dawson Spate has it for A&T. Makes a move at the five to ten-yard line and gets snowed under. He keeps on going, keeps his footing. Good work by Quante Spade to fumble the football, and actually now Bethune Cookman says they have it. There is a scramble for the pigskin on the ground. Spade looked like he st was stopped, and he was, but you, you saw the momentum in the crowd moving downfield. How many times do you see that a running back giving second, third, and fourth effort, which you, you love as you a love coach, it. but you hate it when this happens. When and the referee what? comes out and goes the other way, it just hurts you. And the Wildcats have the football. Let's see what happens. Spate never really had control from the get-go, Charles. He really didn't, but when he when he got inside the hole, he's really fighting for yardage, and the ball just comes free. Number 28, Larry Summers, the man who recovered the football for the Wildcats. Now George Small's team is up against it. Bethune Cookman has the football inside the A&T 25-yard line, and they already have a 7-0 lead. When pressure's on your defense already, right away they give up a score early, and now they have to come back on a short field. Russell, the straight drop back this time, has got pressure from Larry Harrison and ran from behind. 
by Montre Jackson, number 46. One of the few times you'll by see 46, Russell Jackson. get tackled behind the line of scrimmage like that. Great story about Montre Jackson. We'll talk about during the game, but you can see his ability. Right there, you go with a drop back pass, which is kind of surprising to me when you're running the option so well. But look at the pressure. Montre Jackson just comes in there flying up on Jimmy Russell. We talk about his neck. He had a severe neck injury. Coach Small needed a lot of encouragement to get him back on the field. The first drill that he did was Oklahoma drill. And they, last year yeah. in spring practice, right? And come. there was some question whether or not he was going to come back. They made sure they talked to all the doctors, made sure that Montre wanted to do it, and he did. The pitch this time to number five, Eric Weems, tight roping his way down the left sideline as we go back to the studio and Mike Hall. Hey Mike, checking in Big Ten style, Northwestern and Michigan. It's already 14-0 Michigan when Mr. Fun Brett Bazinet looks to Mark Fillmore and he's going to fill a lot here. A nice touchdown, 62 yards. This is the first time since 1959 Northwestern plays Michigan and they're ranked ahead of him, Mike. Third and three. Nobody knows that better than I do. <laughs> We've got another set of Wildcats led by that cat right there, that cool cat, head coach Alvin Wyatt, who played in the show for the uh, five years in the National Football League with the Bills and the Raiders. Quite the motivator. P.J. Smith looked like he had the football. Some great press to digitation on the part of Jimmy Russell as he flips it out to Richard Woodbury and a loss in the play. Well, hesitation because they finally played the option the way it should have been played. Right away, they stopped and everyone is accounted for. In the last few plays, there has been no one there to stop those guys, and they've been able to pitch the ball outside. Jackson is there in position. Montre Jackson, who made the play before, but also everyone else was on their keys. Defensive linemen, linebackers, everybody has to be in sync. It's almost a, a synchronized swimming, so to speak. But listen, you gotta be in sync with your guys on defense when you're playing the option. So Jesus Cortez on to attempt a 37-yard field goal. His long this year, 50 yards, against Morgan State. It is up, and he is good. Perfect on the extra point. Perfect on the three-pointer from 37 yards away. Bethune-Cookman with a 10-0 lead over North Carolina A&T here on Senior Night. Bethune-Cookman coach Alvin Wyatt. You know, he, he's got sort of a, a bone to pick with yeah, A&T yeah, ever yeah, since yeah, 1996 yeah. when A&T beat Bethune-Cookman 73-7 to on their homecoming <laughs> night here. He thought they were rubbing it in a little bit too much, so if the score gets a little out of hand here, don't be surprised. Flag on the play on this return by Quante Spade from A&T. Usually, the flag dropped where it was, usually in means uh, holding on the routine, return team. Well, A&T just can't win, and I know when you're... Yeah. Doing the return, illegal block in the back, number 53 of the return team, coming his half the distance to the goal, first down. You can't keep putting yourself in this position, Mike, in order to win a ball game, whether it's at your home or wherever you are. You have to put yourself in a much better situation. And that was the guy who should have known better, a veteran, Monte Daniels. It was a starting inside linebacker for George Small. Let's see what, what has happened to a and this year in the MEAC Conference. Third in the league, that's not a category in which you want to be. No, you don't want to be there. Uh, among the uh, leaders. They'll start this offensive possession inside their 10 at the eight yard line. Once again, Marshall Glenn getting the start for the injured Rico Watkins. And on first down, a quick toss outside to Brandon Trusty, number three. Brandon Trusty on the reception. And this is when no you're touchdowns this season, but 33 receptions. So he, is, he has been a and go-to guy. And if you look at him over the course of his career, 81 career receptions, but only two touchdowns. Now he has 22 consecutive games with the catch more of a possession receiver they want to get him more involved would like to be able to throw the football even more effectively but the thing is they have to get that you pick up seven yards on first down that's a very good sign for this ANT offense ANT second and three flag on the play we give to the tailback Sweeney 
know, the other thing you want to do is keep the ball out of the hands of the <laughs> Bethune-Cookman offense. Michael Ferguson. Michael Ferguson to me in, on the carry there for a and T. Defense up in the back. neutral zone at the snap. Number 92, five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Dennis King guilty of the infraction for Bethune-Cookman. You always take a gift. <laughs> if you're A&T, you, you know, now you can breathe a little bit better. You can get your offense rolling. You got that initial first down. You know, this is the area where a lot of teams don't practice and use the ability to get that first first down. That first down, when you're that far back in your end zone or your, your territory, you have to get one first down, and then you can open your playbook a little bit more. A&T running out of the I formation. Glenn gets it to the tailback. Michael Ferguson again. And the yards tough to come by inside. Well, if your offensive line aren't pushing and they're not getting any movement for you, it's hard. There's going to be a face mask penalty here, which is a gift. But th these guys up front have to do a better job of getting some push. We're talking about Christopher Gates and Terry Incidental Jones and mask, Christian Hill. Number 41 of the defense, five yards added to the end of the run, remains first down. You know, you've had some movement on this offensive line. There's been a number of reasons why they've been anemic. But Thune Cookman, two penalties in a row. So you can tell Alvin White is not happy. But right there, look at the push on the line. Not much. Fullback gets stoned. And right there, where did the face mask come? I don't see it. Really, the second hand, the left hand, maybe. But it didn't look like a clear face mask. Michael Christen in the game, number 34. It's fullback for the Aggies. Ferguson on the carry. Michael Ferguson with the carry. Torian Charles. Torian Charles. Torian Charles. Stop for Bethune Cookman. Got to find a way to get this running game going. Another flag on this play. That's three flags in a row. We talked about the discipline of defending the Wyatt ball. After the play was over, personal foul, number 28 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Larry Summers is going to get the air for. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be in some serious trouble to transfer from Auburn University. You cannot have those kind of penalties. In, in particular, when the offense is struggling and you give them gifts. They've had 25 yards of Christmas so yeah, far. Yeah, you know what? And no matter how jacked up you are, oh, no. how motivated you are, how aggressive you are, you can't afford to do that. They're going to the sidelines, yeah. and Alvin Wyatt's bringing his team. He called timeout. He's bringing them over to the sideline, and he is going to give them a chew. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not gonna, he looks like Richard Pryor a little bit, doesn't he? <laughs> it's not going to be so much about what you know what what we're going to do against them. It, now they're they're beating themselves. When you take the sunglasses off, you know yeah. you're in for serious. That, you know when your father did that when you were growing up, you knew you were in trouble. Yeah. And he is like a father figure to these Bethune players. This Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern, women's college soccer crosses your way on ESPNU for the Mid Atlantic Athletic Conference Championship women's college soccer on ESPNU Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. But Mike, the best thing about it is if you're North Carolina A&T, you have to capitalize on this. You have to use this if you're George Small. Tennis Berry has to come up with a way to get this offense going. There's been a lot of pressure on this, this man here as well. The, the Aggie alumni are not ones to stand pat. And I think the way they've struggled this year, there's a lot of pressure on them. Even though he's an alumnus here and played here and, and done some great things in the MEAC in the past, I think when you don't win, I don't care where you are, the alumni around will make, make that known. Began their football excursion back in 1924. One of the better teams and certainly MEAC lore. Six championships under their belt, the last being just two years ago. Marshall Glenn, that little inside toss, taking a page from the Wyatt Bone. Little spread offense action there. 
You heard Mike Hall talk about Brett Bassman against Michigan. Marshall Glenn looking like Brett Bassman there. Hey, whatever kind of star they give, 71 should get one. Christian Hill, the guard pulling. Watch this bar. Boom! When you get that guy out of the way, and then you look down the field, Curtis Walls blocking down the field. Lock, wide receivers just don't block. Look at Christian Hill. Big so block. Excited. And look at that good block right there. Locked up on him, just taking him back. Down, Woo. my man. Down, when my man. When you play tight end, you love to see a wide receiver get a block like That's that. That's right. And let's mention the running back who gained 18 yards. He had to have Michael, help. Michael Ferguson. Glenn. It's his wide receiver. Walls, the guy who did. See? You block for me, I'll throw the football hey, to you. Marshall Glenn said he got some lobbying in that huddle. Marshall, throw me the football. I just had a great block downfield. I was doing what I was supposed to do. Can I get a bone, please? Only 12 on the year before that one. You know, the nice thing about this is you look at Wall's numbers for this season is that Brandon Trusty usually is the guy who gets the football. They need to spread the wealth a little bit around as far as the wide receivers is concerned. So this is a good thing that Walls is now being involved in the offense tonight. Giving Glenn a lot of options, who looks good so far. Single back. As they give it to Trusty, the throw out to Trusty, and does he have enough for the first down? Brandon, Brandon takes that around on that little the counter play and comes back around like a short reverse and ran into his own man look i like that play how it's set up but turn he's gonna it up run field. The, turn yeah, it up field he's gonna turn into the wall yeah oh, doink. Man. <laughs> ran into what, fellow wide receiver doug brown number five walter stith blocking for him the big six eight 310 pound left ta right tackle who transferred from western michigan at the 260 pound tight end that's called training table. <laughs> Glenn, nice, nice decision there. Pitts wasn't there, decided to keep it himself. I'd venture to say the defensive line was offsides when they're trying to make a play on the short yardage play. That would be the fourth penalty if it's against Bethune Cookman. Torian Charles is the man who stuffed it up there. Number 11, the middle linebacker. A transfer from the University of Florida and Bethune Cookman's leading tackler. And you see Marshall Glenn yeah. signaling, hey, it's on the Wildcats. You know, we talked to George Small yesterday. What did he say? Football intelligence and command of the offense was what Marshall Defense Glenn had. in the neutral zone at the snap. Number 92, five yards from the previous spot. Results in the first down. Well, you just do what you have to do. You make a play, and you find where that play is going to come from. Good setup. They're running the option a little bit. They have that in their playbook as well. a &T does. It's not their staple. But with George Small, he has to be happy so far, content. He won't be happy until they score. You know, Coach Small told us yesterday, you know, about many attributes that that young man, Marshall Glenn, has. He doesn't have the arm of Oric Watkins nor the speed, but he is a leader, and he's a class act on the field. Making good decisions tonight. Michael Ferguson again. Or is it Brandon Sweeney back in the game? But they've been alternating the two of them. That little sedilla at the top of the O there. It's hard to tell if it's a six. There it is. That's number 20. And that is definitely Brandon Sweeney. Grew up in the same uh, part of Akron, Ohio that LeBron James did. His cousin is Tyrell Sutton, the fine freshman running back from Northwestern. You got it in there. <laughs> you know I was. You never graduated, right? We never. <laughs> <laughs> we no. love this too much. If if our bodies were able, we'd be on that field tonight. I'll tell you that, Charles. Glenn rolling to his wife. He took a tremendous, tremendous shot by Travis Roland as we go back to the studio and Mike Hall. All right, Mike. Let's. Anything and all things can happen in college football. That much we know for certain. North Carolina a and on third down tonight, one of three, and they face a third and six here, a big third and six. Glenn's got his tight end wide open, touchdown, Aggies! Now where did that come from? Brandon Johnson. Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson, yeah. excuse me. Uh, he, he doesn't he catch the ball enough, he, he kind of don't know his name. Guess, yeah, well, guess what, it was the ball fake. It was a great fake. Great call in that particular area, seam route. I'm happy. I mean, I'm surprised because they threw to the tight end. Four on the year, number five. Number five is a touchdown. You, know, you, you got a guy that's like an Arbuckle. you got to utilize his talents. He can get down the field. He yep. just showed it there. Brandon Trusty to hold for Joseph Arroyo. 
as a and now cuts the Bethune-Cookman lead to just three. An exciting drive there, aided by some Bethune-Cookman penalties at all the wrong times, put a and in this football game. Well, whenever you have that many penalties and you give teams opportunities, now there looks like this may be a flag on this play. Just good fake right there inside. For the kicking and team, 10 yard penalty, retry. Just good fake inside, and that holds the defense just enough. You see the linebacker get sucked yeah. in, and then outside, 22, Ben Ballard has responsibility. But once you hesitate one second, that guy has a chance to get by you. We saw that on that run, same kind of situation. Good job by Brian Johnson. I know he was waiting on that. They called the play in the huddle, and when you know it's coming to you, what do you do, Mike? I got to catch it, got to catch it, got to catch it, going to catch it. And he did. <laughs> Cortez has to kick, a, kick again because of, because of a holding penalty against a &T. This one from 30 yards out, and he's got it. So Cortez, whether field goal or from extra point range, he's been nailing him, or Arroyo, I should say. Joseph Arroyo with the extra point from 30 yards out was like a field goal. The Aggies. Aggies cut the Wildcats, lead to three here. Good job of capitalizing on the mistakes by Bethune Cookman. And also just some good running by. It was a good combination between Sweeney and then Ferguson. Ferguson came in and gave him a nice little spark. The team seems to rally around Marshall Glenn, and that's one of the reasons why he's in the game. If he's not able to play or gets injured, they'd go to Marcus Hammond. And at the last resort, I'm talking to Coach Small yesterday, Rico Watkins would come in. But ultimately, if you can win the game with the guy that can manage it and also have pressure taken off around him, having people make plays, like a Brian Johnson, Trusty we know is going to catch the football. He does it every single game out. But you need other people to step up. And you saw in that drive, Michael Ferguson was one of those guys. Lee Woodson set to kick off for a and not even listed as one of the return man for Bethune Cookman and Ricky Williams looking like his namesake when he used to play for the Texas Longhorns well if and if he does return he has 11 on the year one for a touchdown a 90 yard long now let's let's change that he has another one on his belt book for a touchdown <laughs> Ricky Williams didn't get touched until he got to the sideline and that's not good if you're a returner for the other team 82 yards Wow. So any momentum that A&T gathered by that last touchdown drive of their of their own quickly dissipating in the face of that long kickoff return for a touchdown by Ricky Williams. Game-changing play sometimes comes in special teams. We focus on offense and defense. That's, you know, everybody loves to see that. But when you can do that suddenly like that, the crowd. And I and I apologize <laughs> because I was looking at the uh, a and return, man. Ricky Williams leads Division One AA in kickoff returns. Earlier this year, a 95-yarder for a touchdown. He's been averaging over 30 five yards per kickoff return and you can see why well no one touches him in this great blocking if you get a short kick you got to either kick it deep to him or kick it to one side of the field if you kick to the middle of the field you give a guy like ricky williams too many opportunities to make a move inside with only 12 returns that tells me mike he's not getting the ball kicked to him a lot but when he does well you better watch yeah, out everybody in the meac certainly knows about him in division one double a that's for sure Second kickoff return for a touchdown this season. Some things you can hide, but you can't hide a good kickoff returner. And when you get a chance for that man there, he has to be upset with his kicker for not putting the ball either to one side or the other. You make the field short, so he, you have 11 guys in a very confined space as far as coverage. There was no coverage on that play. You know, we were watching the Ohio State-Minnesota game earlier today, and we were asking each other, you know, if 
If a, an opposing team were to have get one player from Ohio State, who would you want that to be? Well, it would be Ted, Ted Ginn. Ginn. Yeah, Teddy Ginn. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. The, the difference makers like Ricky Williams and Ted Ginn hard to find. You think of Jerome Mathis, who used to be at Hampton last year, with all the speed. You know, you think of guys that you would just say, I like him. I want to take him from where. I want him on my team. Quante Spate returning the ball for A&T out across the 25-yard line. Tackled by James or Cedric Mason, number 24 for Bethune Cookman. Tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, catch all the bumps, sets, and spikes on ESPNU's coverage of women's college volleyball as the Cincinnati Bearcats take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in South Bend. Women's college volleyball on ESPNU tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. A&T will start this offensive possession at their 27-yard line. Let's see if Marshall Glenn can engineer another scoring drive. Look good on the last one. They give the spate as we go back to the ESPNU studios and Mike Hall. Mike Hall. Hey, Mike. Well, yeah, and if they struggle, even if they win, you know how they'll get leapfrogged by Virginia Tech the way that's working. Yeah, they may drop the three. Four, four. <laughs> Quante Spate, now the primary ball carrier for a &T. Aggies having success working inside against the bethune Cookman front four. Well, Quante Spate also has been out for three weeks, but before that, three 100-yard rushing games, so very good back. Even though he's not the starter, I think you're going to see a lot of them. We didn't anticipate seeing as much of them today, but I guess he's been healthy enough in practice. Yeah, a relatively young a &T offensive team anyway. Quante just a sophomore from Halifax, North Carolina. There's a ball that should have been caught. One of the things that Brandon Trusty not so trustworthy on that, on that reception. And he's usually very good about catching the ball, but it looks like he wants to try to run with it before he actually catches it. You know, sometimes the hardest balls to catch are the ones that hit you in the where? The hands. Because you're thinking, I'm going to run this ball. It's easy. It's coming to me. And nope, I dropped it. Son, I've seen a lot of dink and dub kind of stuff for Marshall Glenn tonight. He throws the short pass well. We have yet to see him unload on the long ball. That's one area where they said he does not do as well in the vertical game. That's where Rico Watkins really goes well for this offense. Now he's operating on the shotgun as Sweeney's back in the game. He gets the ball deep in the backfield. And everybody there, including Torrey and Charles, number 11 for Bethune-Cookman to throw Sweeney for a loss. We talked about Bethune-Cookman. They lost 10 starters on defense from last year. Yeah, Summers is the only returning starter. But they plug guys in. Bobby Williams leads the nation in interceptions with six. I mean, you got Raymond McCullough. I just keep looking at two saying, I think I'm going to see a defensive back, but I see a big guy. They're, they're doing a good job yeah, with making this defense work for them. And Alvin Wyatt teaching and <laughs> well, he's got so many sayings, does Alvin Wyatt. One of them, who's the boss? We are. Right now, Bethune Cookman the boss with a 17-7 lead here in Greensboro, North Carolina as we end the first quarter. Back here in Greensboro, North Carolina, about to begin the second quarter of play here on College Football Primetime ESPNU. Bethune Cookman and their coach Alvin Wyatt leading 17 to 7. This guy is the master of the pep talk, a master motivator, very colorful. The gospel according to Wyatt, well, one of them, there's a champion inside of each of you waiting to come out. Who's the boss? We are. Who are we? Showstoppers. What are we? Dream killers. And tonight's shirts, we'll see it after this play. Third down and 11 yards for the North Carolina A&T Aggie. Marshall Glenn with time. A medium range pass overthrown. Intended for Curtis Walls as we were talking about the motivation. Tonight's motivational teacher, I ain't never scared. That's gonna. That's not gonna endear him to the English professors and the no. Cookman. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Alvin, what did I teach you? He's a, he's a Bethune Cookman College graduate, too. We have two alumni coaches, which is, is interesting. You don't often see that, but both guys are at their own home school, so to speak. I got ever scared. Correct for now. <laughs> Look out, look out, look out. 
Ball rolling to a stop at the 22-yard line. A wildcat for life, that's for sure. You mentioned it. he was an All-American all defensive back, then a defensive assistant coach. He was also the head defensive coordinator under Larry Little, the Hall of Famer from the Miami Dolphins, defensive coordinator we mentioned, and the head coach since 1997. And before all that, or while that was going on as an assistant coach, he was the head women's basketball coach for 17 years. And Bobby Williams, his star safety, his aunt played basketball for Alvin Wyatt. Can you say multitasker? He was able to do that. He's spinning a lot of pie plates at the same time. Well, there's P.J. Smith getting loose again. So far, a t has just not been able to stop the Wildcat yeah, fullback. Jawan McBride finally runs him out of bounds. Well, this is where the option quarterback has to make that read, and he's going to either give it to him or take it away. He gives it to him. You can give it and take it away, and P.J. is able to show you some yards. Now look at this. He, he has the ability, and if he sees that opening out of the peripheral vision, that's Jimmy Russell, he will either hand the ball off or pull it back. And right there, very good read. And P.J. with a gain of 20 yards on that last play, he gets it again. I wonder if you can see, Charles, that unconventional stance that he has. He almost, he's got a three-point stance, but it's like a track athlete more than a fullback. The center also does the same thing. Vernon Edwards gets down with the ball on the hand and then also puts his other hand down as opposed to putting both balls on the... Well, what he does here is you can see he wants to pull it out, <laughs> but he decides to keep it there, and it's such a good fake. But Wait look, a minute. Jimmy Give me Russell, the ball back. Yeah, but Jimmy Russell follows him to make sure, sure that he doesn't fumble. It, yeah, and he yeah. can get the ball right there if he does. This time he does keep it himself in a very dangerous pitch, but somehow he gets it off. Mike is not very dangerous. When you watch these guys in warm-ups, Jimmy Russell would go down the field. It's going to be a flag. It's going to be against a &T. He will go down the field 30, 40 yards before he'll Personal actually pitch foul. the ball. Unnecessary roughness. Number 46 of the defense. 15 yards added to the run. First down. Montre with a little frustration. Montre Jackson, George Small can't like that. Richard Woodbury, the ball carrier there. He actually, he actually, Jimmy Russell, watch this. He launches this thing. Well, he keeps his spacing over, and he knows he's over, over, over a defender. He knows where the guys are. And they were doing this down the field before the game. They were working. Montre Jackson, I don't know where he comes in. Maybe it's back off the play. We don't see that happen down the field. So it clearly had to happen away. But they work on it going down the field so they get the spacing and know what they can and can't do. But that time it was over 52 Orla Orlando Norman. I mean, he actually gets it over his head almost like a, a little basketball flip. Yeah, a short jumper from the key. Pulls it out from Smith. Pitches it outside to Eric Weems. Wilbur Johnson taking him to the turf. And see, that's the problem if you're a defense. You're a &T, you don't see this. Alonzo Lee, the defensive coordinator who spent a lot of time in the MEAC, even got behind the quarter, I mean, got behind the center and did this himself. Just to show, but look at this. As soon as he gets hit, boom. He anticipates when he's going to get hit by the defender and knows I got to get the ball. I have a couple of seconds. I have a second. He knows from feeling and flow. Now, if you're the defend, defensive guys, you got to make sure you make him pay every time he gets in that situation. Okay, there you see P.J. Smith in that track stance. Doesn't get the football. Weems does. He fumbles it, picks it up, and goes in the other direction. And a huge loss for Bethune-Cookman. Ricky Lewis detonated that play from the get-go and fouled it through. He is by far and away, along with Shamar Milton, a and best defender. And this is what happens with the option. It can be so good, but it can be so bad as well. Montre Jackson does a good job of stopping Jimmy Russell before he can get to his area of pitch. And that throws everything off. Watch Montre Jackson. He's going to come down and just stop him, not allow him to get that second, third step. So that's where they get the, the synergy and the ability to get between them. Forces a nice negative play for North Carolina a &T. The result, third and 25 for Jimmy Russell and company and the Wyatt Bone, and they won't get the playoff. Talk about Ricky Lewis, him and Shamar Moore, Milton. See? Time out. For Phil Cookman. That's that third and final yeah. charge time out of the half. You know what? 12 02 remaining in the second half. 
and already they've used up all three timeouts. Alvin Wyatt, you're going to have to explain that to us after the break. Division I AA schools don't have the budgets that the big schools do, but if you're in the MEAC and the SWAC and you've got a road game, I guarantee you your band's going to follow. That was the Bethune-Cookman Wildcat marching band going wild in the stands. So is their football team. Who says Jimmy Russell can't throw the rock? A nice gun. I mean, he's able to throw the football, but they have so many more yards to gain. That's just getting you in a better position to kick a field goal. Darius Butler on the receiving end of that aerial. Transfer from University of Iowa. A lot of transfers can come to Division I-A school, double, double schools because they can play right away. They don't have to sit out. And, you know, it's a great it's a great thing, too, and, and a lot of these guys have to follow, even so even somebody signs a letter of intent at a bigger school. These coaches follow their career. You recruit almost two, three times. You make sure if a guy transfers, can we get him? Jesus Cortez is no good. So A&T dodges a bullet here. Thanks to that big loss. And Montre Jackson breaking up that play on the reverse to uh, Eric Weems. And Alvin Wyatt not happy with his troops right now. How close was it? Missed it by, wow. I'm not so sure that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we have a tough angle from here. The, the officials yeah. are right directly right underneath under. the goalpost. Look, what he, look where he catches it. Yeah. I mean, that, that had to just be right on the other side. Yeah. Wide coach right. He <laughs> said, no, it's over. Yeah, he tried to be like the catcher, you know, bringing the ball back over the plate there. Nothing doing. So A&T takes over, trailing by 10, 17-7 with 11-12 remaining to go here in the first half. And Marshall Glenn going to work. He's got Brandon Sweeney on the outside all alone. Cuts it back inside across the 45 and almost to midfield before finally being brought down. Hey, John Cato, Mr. Durability out front. But this is the quick option, speed option, get it outside type of option. Look at big 75 down the field. Marshall Glenn knows he's going to get hit. 75 down the field trying to block has the block earlier, and then goes and gets it again. <laughs> and Sweeney, with the benefit of a short side, they went to the short side of the field, and it's very quick. I think all the defense goes over one way, even though they know that that option can come to the short side Sweeney, of the field. Sweeney, a kid who had 205 yards in a game earlier this year against Morgan State on 42 carries. An illustration of why on that last play. Sweeney again, little jitterbug inside, gains about seven as we return to the ESPNU studios and Mike Hall. Mike? From a jitterbug there to the dance between Mike back here at Aggie Stadium. North Carolina A&T with the football and trailing Bethune-Cookman by 10, 17-7. Marshall Glenn fakes it, rolls to his left, or right. And he's got Brandon Trusty for another first down. I'll tell you what, Marshall Glenn, Coach George Small wasn't all that high on him yesterday. He had great things to say about him as a person, but as a quarterback tonight, he's looked terrific. Well, he's handling the ball very well, but I think, you know, Mike, going back to the receiver position and back to quarterback played a lot bigger role for him than just playing receiver and not really knowing. That ball was on a strike, on a rope, but he said yesterday when we talked to him, you know, playing receiver has helped me understand when I make a bad throw or when the quarterback makes a bad throw, it's sometimes I have to make a good catch and some respectable numbers tonight four of eight for 54 yards and staying within his limitations too hasn't thrown the long ball and they might be setting something up Sweeney the ball carriage tackled by number two your favorite player tonight on Bethune Cookman Ramon McCullough <laughs> well, I the tell deuce. You what happens though 41 goes against 41 William Short and Christopher Robinson the middle linebacker versus the fullback Christopher Robinson for Bethune-Cookman wins that battle, and that's why the big guy is able to get that big tackle. Although he's not going to tell you that. No, and he will. And when they watch film tomorrow and the yeah. clicker's going, he's going to say, Coach, I got to thank Christopher Robinson. Do you think? No, I don't no, think I so. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Second and ten, Glenn working out of the shotgun. And Eric Weems cannot hang on to it. Oh, Brandon Trusty, number three, excuse me. That's the second drop he's had tonight of a ball right in his hands. 
That will set up a third and 11. Got to have those. And that's where Marshall Glenn is saying, Brandon, help me out here. I've yeah. given you two, one in the numbers and the other one right in your hands. You got to make that catch. You know, that wasn't going to be for long yardage, but it would have set up a third and five, third and four, much more manageable situation for Marshall Glenn. But the way he's playing, I think he has the confidence now, Mike, that he can pick up this third and ten the way his, this offense has been working for him. Sweeney the eye back, three wide receivers. Oh, he's hit the tight end. He got his tight end. Joshua King, the backup tight end. Heating your call. Well, if you're a quarterback that hadn't played in a while, I'm going to the closest receiver and the guy that can make a play for me. This is just a jump drop pass. He sees that guy running inside. They vacate a zone. He's able to get it to Joshua King. If you're the quarterback, you love tight ends. So I knew when he was playing, I didn't even ask him because I said he's going to throw to the tight end. This game plan that uh, George Small has put together tonight has been very, very efficient so far. Of course, they need to capitalize here. First and ten. Give it to Sweeney, who gets nailed in the backfield. Tari and Charles, the leading tackler this season for the Wildcats, leading the charge. But Tari and should thank 41, Christopher Robinson again. He comes in and stops Michael Christians, Cole in his tracks, and Sweeney has to cut back in before there's anything there. This is a next-level player. Oh, he, he's 6'1", 245, he's got the goods. He got, he's got game. Yep. <laughs> Mom won't like that at home in Austin, Texas. I'm sorry, but he's got game. He can yeah. play the game the way it's supposed to be played. <laughs> with, got, with English yeah. for me. She'll say, hey, that's not proper English, son. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn's in trouble. Got to reverse his direction in the backfield and finally finding a receiver. Michael Ferguson. Yeah. Looks like he's back in the game. Who's been alternating tonight with Sweeney. Well, that defensive line, we talked about him. They have to get pressure against Sweeney. Pressure him. And right there, when he throws the ball, there's two defenders right in front of him. One being Ben Ballard. The other being Rodney Hughes. So third and goal, but third and goal from the 16-yard line. Six. 59 remaining here in the first half of play. And a huge play for a &T. Oh! <laughs> Glenn going up top and looking for Brian Johnson, Brian Johnson to the tight end. I have on my notes mainly blocker. <laughs> and tonight, it's good to see the tight end. It must, you know, whenever tight ends come do games, they want to see the tight end in the action. And again, nice fake inside. It holds the linebacker, Ricky Hughes, just enough. But Glenn can't get it to him. Yeah, the thing that was missing there was a little bit of touch, though. It, it, but it's a tough throw because he yeah. sees him. He has a guy behind him, and that, yeah. that linebacker, if he holds him just enough, but it wasn't quite enough yeah. room. So Joseph Arroyo now, you kick the field goal. From 34 yards away, it's up, it's good. Brandon Trusty, the holder there. And North Carolina A&T back in this thing, trailing by seven, but a lot of football to go here in the first half. About 6.44 remaining here in the second quarter. College football primetime on ESPNU. Bethune-Cookman with a 17-10 lead. And every, every kick tonight should be an adventure for North Carolina A&T. Why? Because they have a long snapper who's never done it before, except in practice, Quentin Corey, who's 165 pounds and a defensive back. Well, and and their Brandon Trusty is their wide receiver who's the holder, and he made the great... Well, they have two of them. Lee Oliver is snapping for the, the short snaps, yeah. but Council, Corey Council is, is doing it for the deep snaps. Yeah. Quentin Corey, right. Quentin Corey, excuse me. Meanwhile, Ricky Williams, who ripped off that 83-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, getting loose again, but a flag on the play. <laughs> he keeps you up at night. Oh, man. You're the special teams coach. You're going back and forth and back and forth. How do we stop this guy? Well, and, you know, the odd thing about that, we talk about the snappers. They're both freshmen. So, you know, to be pressed in the action like that is a tough situation to be in. 
The normal long snapper is a guy named Oritz Green, from a sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina. He is out because of injury tonight. Normally a fullback, but he's a wide body at 5'10", there are two fouls 240. On the play. Holding, doing a return, an illegal block in the back. The holding is declined. The illegal block in the back is on number 19 of the return team. At the distance to the goal, first foul. So A&T's defense has got Bethune-Cookman right where they want them. And now it's up to Alvin Wyatt's bunch to get out of this hole. I don't care how good you are. If you keep having penalties like that, you're going to hurt yourself. And you're seeing now where they are. You close the playbook a little bit here on the five. Charles, do you get conservative even though you run the Wyatt bone this deep in your own territory? Well, you have to make the plays that you're accustomed to making so you can see they're still going with what they do. And they, what they do best so far tonight is hand the ball off to that kid, P.J. Smith, Smith the carry. feedback in this Wyatt Bone offense, tackled by Wilfred Billingsley well, and Wilbur Johnson. Uh, and that's how you get conservative. You hand it off to the fullback if the read is there. If there's a hole there in the bubble and you feel like you can hand that ball off, that's where you do. That's where you go. Second down and five. This time, Russell pulls the ball out, runs it himself. And a perfect illustration of why this youngster is so dangerous. Monte Daniels finally brings him down. And they say he's not very fast. He has football speed. When I watch him on film, I just see him really making plays. Now, you're going to hear a big collision. You'll see this on PJ right there. Boom. He comes inside, 52. But that doesn't allow, that allows him to get outside. When you give him all that room, Orlando Norman comes in and blows up the play, but Jimmy Russell's running on air. Just like that. They, they also put the ball in play very quickly. They give yep. the ball to P.J. Smith again, who's having a banner night. <laughs> I mean, this is where, where you just look at this team and you say, man, they, they keep you up at night if you're a defensive coordinator. P.J. coming into tonight's game, six touchdowns. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Six carries, 86 yards, and a touchdown tonight for P.J. The Wyatt bone uh, is sort of a combination of the wishbone and the ham bone. Tracy Ham. Tracy Georgia Ham Southern. from Georgia Southern. And the A and the B back. A is for Alvin, Alvin White, and B is for Brad Bernard, Brad Bernard the offensive coordinator who came and played with Tracy Ham at Georgia Southern. Tracy Ham, of course, going on to great things in the Canadian Football League, a sensational Division I AA All-American quarterback. And I also There's had, Bernard. Yeah, and also at it at the very bottom. I don't know if you get to see the quarterback must have rhythm. And that's, Option quarterbacks, have to, they have to be able to dance. You know Michael Jackson. If Michael Jackson played football, he's got the best feet for the option. Don't, <laughs> you know, but if he'd, going to the, he'd lose yardage on the moonwalk, though. I'm no, sorry. No, that's, that's his celebration. Oh, okay. I'm talking about his ability with his feet. Don't you know? Well, they have to have rhythm. Jimmy yeah. Russell has that. <laughs> it's an offense that is predicated on rhythm but not necessarily predicated on throwing the football. One of the things that A&T told us yesterday, talking to the coaching staff, is that the way to beat this team, what we'd like them, is that we, we're going we're gonna to defend against the run, that's for sure, and try to let PJ or, or Jimmy Russell beat us with his arm. Big 90-96 made that play. Jermaine Brantley and Larry Harrison. Number 78, that penalty is declined. Harrison, 6'3", junior from Detroit, Michigan. One of the few out-of-state out guys. He's getting held. <laughs> yeah. He's still coming off. Look, yeah. he, he, whoop, almost WWE takedown right there. You see 52. It comes on Orlando Norman being held, but Jermaine Brantley and Larry Harrison, nice defensive play. So Bethune forced to kick the football, punt the football for the first time tonight. And Brandon Trusty takes it on a line drive across the 40-yard line of Bethune-Cookman, where North Carolina A&T will begin its next possession and trailing the Wildcats by only seven. Stay with us. Back here at uh, Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina, the home team trailing by 10. 
but they have the ball first and 10 at the Bethune-Cookman 40-yard line. Mike Ferguson now back in the game for Brandon Sweeney, a tailback, and he picks up a quick six. Keep him fresh. You know, Sweeney you thought was going to play the full game and get most of the action, but if you have Spade coming back and also Ferguson, who has shown tonight he can run the ball as well, you, you make sure you get that three-headed monster and you keep this football away from this Bethune-Cookman offense. That's your best defense sometimes. You know, well, after scoring 40 points two weeks ago in an overtime win over Morgan State, they've only put 13 on the board in the last two weeks, being shut out last week by Howard, 16 to nothing. Tonight, a complete reversal offensively for this A&T football team. Thanks in part to Marshall Glenn and his good decision making as he picked up the first down on the option. We talked so much about the Wyatt Bone during this telecast. The A&T option, very sound, Charles. Why can not teams that see this every day or when they go in spring and summer not defend the option better? You see defenses, it's like they haven't seen it before. They see this every day in practice, even though they don't practice ones-on-ones, as right. you know. They still see it all summer long, all preseason, but they still can't defend it. I don't understand it. Glenn and company have the ball at the Bethune-Cookman 28-yard line, I formation. Bringing all the Wildcats on the play. They might have been offside. Brandon Sweeney or Michael Ferguson. Michael Ferguson. But there's a flag on the play. One's down at about the eight-yard line. Initially, I thought it was defensive offsides because when they came with that blitz. Well, Marshall Glenn, the yeah. A&T quarterback, is signaling touchdown. Well, when they came with that blitz, they were there early. There are two fouls on the play. Both fouls are against the defense. In the neutral zone at the snap. Incidental face mask. Both fouls are declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. Well, whatever George Small said to his troops when we went into the locker room before the game, this being senior night, this being a chance to end your home season on an up note has paid off. Not much love lost between either team, mm -mm, either, either, mm -mm. either programs. Either. No, 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 that's for sure. <laughs> Ferguson, Mike Ferguson's first touchdown of his collegiate career. That's pretty sweet. Arroyo for the extra point. And on a magnificent night here in Greensboro, A&T doing a little Cali Carolina dreaming. They've tied Bethune-Cookman at 17-all. If you're A&T, you want to make sure those boys from Florida have a long bus ride back home. And we go back to the ESPNU studios. Mike Hall, what do you have for us at halftime? Well, hopefully a show that's as exciting as your game right now. We'll take you out to USC, see if they can get back into this BCS, BCS hunt for number one, and they do pretty big style. We'll also check in on the world's largest outdoor cocktail party and see what happened there. It was a close one, came down to the final quarter, final minutes, and we'll Update you on the Big Ten teams, who's for real and who is fake, plus a fantastic game. Texas is getting mopped up by Oklahoma State. We'll update you on that all coming up at half. Wow. Who would have thunk, uh, huh? Well, whenever you have that ability to get up there, it's always somebody you don't expect. And Oklahoma State being right next door, Oklahoma gets a lot of Texas talent, but Oklahoma State does as well. So that's, how, you know, they want to beat those guys. Yeah. And Oklahoma State's program has not exactly been uh, weak the last several years. But that is definitely an upset of major proportions. Now we have a ball game. 17-17, courtesy of this first collegiate touchdown ever by Michael Ferguson. Blitz comes inside, nobody outside. You have one man to beat, you beat him. He gets your face mask. Bobby Williams, you're not going to get me. I'm going to score my first collegiate touchdown. Mama, I want the ball to bring home. And A&T, the last couple of games running the football. How about that last week against Howard? Minus five yards tonight, 122. What did we say? in the open. If they run the football, they give themselves a chance because they can make plays. They have the guys to do it, just have to do it on the field. They, they benefited by the fact that uh, Quante Spate is healthy tonight. He's been able to help Brandon Sweeney, and so has Michael Ferguson. 
And another flag on the play. This has gotten a little bit ugly. And you can see the rivalry between the, the Aggies and the Wildcats, how, how hot it is. It's a long way from Florida to North Carolina, but these two programs, though, yeah, like you said, they don't, there's not a whole lot of love lost between the two of them. I, now, this face mask, I'm kind of surprised because Montre Jackson comes and grabs him from behind, almost Roy Williams. This is a little face mask, number 46 of the defense, five yards added to the end of the run. Now, the NFL has imposed the rule. You can see 46 right there playing it well. He has to get outside. If he doesn't make that play, now let's see. Grabs his face mask just enough and then pulls him down like Roy Williams, who they have a rule now in the NFL. He comes, he hustles. This is a great hustle play, but only place you can grab is a guy's face mask or his back. Just enough to call that play. And that's why they instituted the new rule, because you can see how he can almost, Eric Williams could be hurt on that play. Thune Cookman tied on the scoreboard, but leading the battle, if there is such a thing of penalties. Nice touch there by Jimmy Russell. Out to his wide receiver, Darius Butler, number 15. First down and then some with 2.16 remaining to go here in the first half. And let me not confuse people. They haven't really instituted their rule in college football, but that's one of the reasons why they've taken it away in the pros. Right. Great play to Darius Butler. You come back on the heels of that nice run. Good fake inside. Good protection. Now you have that pocket to throw in. Not a very a good throw, but a good catch by Darius Butler. Well, the way that P.J. Smith has run the football, all you have to do is a little fake to that guy. That freezes everybody and allows the, the uh, rest of the offense to open up. You can't teach that. You can't teach that. You can't teach that touchdown. Wow. Jimmy Russell. This guy, I think, was the only 4'6", 4'5", but, hey. man, you're right. He has got that football speed. I just keep going back to Jamel Holloway. I'm not comparing Jimmy Russell to Jamel Holloway, but I saw the wishbone my freshman year run better than anybody I've ever seen it, Jamel Holloway. This kid can run the wishbone very, very well. If you over-pursue, he will absolutely toast you, and that's exactly what Jimmy Russell did to the A&T defense. A touchdown run of 39 yards, one of the prettiest things you'll ever see this year in college football. Jesus Cortez on to attempt the extra point, and he missed it. Missed it wide right. The thing with the, the wishbone is that you would think on a grass field also, too, and no crown. Just look at this. Inside, boom, I'm gone. And, and everybody, this is slow motion, mind you, people, and he still looks like he's going in regular speed. A&T's best defender is number 43, Shamar Milton. He runs by him runs with that cutback. Yeah. Shamar was nowhere to be found, and then I don't think anybody got a hand on Jimmy. Football is all about angles and how you do things, and, and it was like Jimmy Williams, or Ricky Williams, excuse me, earlier, when he get, went untouched. Jimmy w Russell did not get touched until he got to the sideline. <laughs> and guess what? He's just a sophomore from Jonesboro, Georgia, averaging uh, after that last touchdown run. He's been sacked quite a few times tonight, or, or tackled in his own backfield anyway. A 39-yard touchdown run for Jimmy Russell. Has put Bethune-Cookman, the Wildcats, who home is in Daytona Beach, Florida. They've got a 23-17 lead in what has been an exceptionally entertaining MEAC game here in Greensboro, North Carolina. We talked about it before. You have to have rhythm and know when you can make certain plays. And on those particular plays, it was set up by linebackers flying in real hard from the outside, taking the outside away. So what do you do? You make sure you can pivot inside. And Jimmy Russell, in watching tape on him, has been able to do that outstanding Every game I've seen him, South Carolina State was one in particular where he had so many nice moves inside. They didn't win that ball game, but it just showed me his ability how to move inside with the football. Quante Spade and Chaz Dawson back deep for a &T. Jesus Cortez kicks the ball out of bounds. That'll mean a penalty, and a and will put the ball in play at the 35. Trailing 23-17, and that mixed extra point by Cortez could come back to haunt the Wildcats. 
You know, I think his rushing yards are misleading, too, for the year. They're only averaging about 70 yards. But you're right. Every time sacked. Number 31 in the kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. Or tackles for loss. They add up into that mix of rushing yards. And that's why 39-yard touchdown, and you say he's only got 38 for the night. Well, the sacks, the tackles for losses, and Alvin White is... is <laughs> you know, our spotter said that, you know, forget it, I, I made the, the, the uh, likened him to Richard Pryor with the glasses when he took the shade off, shades off. He looks like Steve Harvey. And this time, Marshall Glenn is the quarterback who has trouble hanging on to the football. So it'll be second and long for eight... A&T with 148 remaining here to go before the half. This is where Marshall went, man, a struggle. Two-minute offense is the hardest thing for a quarterback to do. And you can see right there, right away, fumbling the snap. This time going across the middle. That's a the good idea, good good thing to do. Don't get all of it back, just get some of it back. Curtis Wallace. A&T, the no-huddle offense, but a flag on the play. One of those offensive linemen getting those hands up in the face. Personal foul, face mask. Number 75 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal, second down. And you would like John Cato, the uh, left tackle for a and Usually it's the defender who's yeah. guilty of the face mask infraction. It's a war in the trenches, that's for sure. So now a and faced with a second, it sure looks longer than second and 20. It looks like about second and 30. 35, there it is. <laughs> Scoreboard had second and, and, and 20. Glenn again, out of the shotgun. Going to Doug Brown, picking up some of that yardage back as we're under the one minute mark. You know, I think one of the things, Mike, is that the clock ticks in your head if you're a quarterback in the two-minute fast, and then you have more time than you really think. And that was a good illustration right there of Marshall Glenn going to the right guy. He was the only one open. They're taking everything deep away, but Bill Cookman is. This time he rolls to his left, throws, he throws right, and he's got Doug Brown again. Very close to the first down mark, and we've got... Or Lennon on the field? Yes. Flag on the player, right, right around the 50-yard line. I think the side judge is going to make this call. Or the back judge. Back judge. Excuse me. Substitution, illegal substitution on the defense, 12 men on the field. That penalty is declined. Results in the play is first down. Well, when the back, the, 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 the back judge is the guy that can see that. He's the farthest enough away. He watches. If the defenders are not on the field the way they need to be and they can't get off in time, you got to get outside those numbers. If you don't get there, they don't see you getting out off the field in time or if you come on and you try to run off, I think that was just a bad play by Bethune Cookman because you know what they're running on offense. And T, you got to have the right amount of personnel in the game. Well, right now, Marshall Glenn's enemy is the clock. 32 seconds remaining. A and T calling timeout. That's the first charge timeout. They've got two more remaining. How close was he? Glenn winds up, fires, and it's Brandon Trusty, about a yard short. Yeah. I think it's going to be a situation where they have to punt the football. They want to go for it. Marshall Glenn is upset. He wants to go for the first down. But you're backed up way in your territory. And given the quick strike potential of the Bethune-Cookman <laughs> offense and quarterback Jimmy Russell, you can understand why George Small is, is a little bit reluctant right now to gamble. Smart decision. I mean, you, you know, you've just given up a touchdown. Uh, a short, it, it was half a time, half time's just 32 seconds away. But you know what? It's senior night, 
you're at home, final home game. I could see yeah, why he I would make see, that, yeah. that choice. But Marshall Glenn wants to go for it. I don't blame him. However, that last drive, I think, was 95 yards, if I'm not mistaken. George Small, <laughs> a, a North Carolina A&T alumnus, as we mentioned, a member of their Athletic yeah. Hall of Fame, graduated in 1979. Played in the National Football League for five years with the Giants and Broncos and Packers, Steelers. But I would go for it. Yeah, all, all of that said, I'd go for it. You're more of a riverboat gambler. I'd go you know. for it. In the short time I've known you, and we've become good, <laughs> very good friends, that doesn't surprise me, Charlie. <laughs> I'd go for it. That's why you're up here and he's yeah. down there. Exactly. Nice punt. Will it... Put a little backspin on it. He might have had it inside the five-yard line. It goes out of bounds. And uh, Bethune-Cookman, here's why they might have taken the shot, because Bethune-Cookman gets the ball back with yeah. 24 seconds, which is like two minutes and 24 seconds the way they play offense. The yeah. only problem is Alvin Wyatt's team doesn't have any timeouts left. They've used them all. First downs will stop the clock, as you know, until <laughs> everything resets. But... That punt was like my golf game. You know, I was hoping to get a little backspin on that. <laughs> I'm always in the water. Always, <laughs> always somewhere. Rolling I don't off the edge of the green, right? Yeah. Dominique Brown kicked it for 57 yards. If it was 56, it would have been perfect. North Carolina A&T and Bethune-Cookman. Wrapped up in a MEAC showdown here in Greensboro, North Carolina. The pitch out to Eric Weems. I hate prevent defenses. I hate them. <laughs> Montre Jackson finally brings Weems down. The clock stops the chains as they reset them for first down. And, and now it's at the 35-yard line. And George Small, who thought his team was going to go into the locker room with a six-point deficit, it may be more than that because Alvin Wyatt is rolling them dice. Well, and I don't blame him because you kicked that field goal, that punt, and, that, and they had no one back. That's the first smart move by Bethune-Cookman. Not having one, anyone back because you don't run any clock off. And then you come back with Eric Wings. How can you pick up this many yards when you know what they do with this right. offense? You have to have people there. This is where guys are relaxing. Well, we'll go in. We're going to have this where it is. And Bethune Cookman is saying, no, wait a minute. We're going to try to score. Russell is trying to score. He's going to air it out. He's got Weems on it. will score. Touchdown. Touchdown, Bethune Cookman. That's what I'm saying. You With just two, four ticks left on the clock here before halftime. 38 yards. Russell to Weems. For the score. What did I say earlier? Take those, try those two yards. They had a 95-yard drive before. They come back 80 yards in 24 seconds. You cannot give up the play like that. You have to be as deep as the deepest man. And Eric Weems made him pay. Two huge plays. He is the A back, the halfback, so to speak, in this Wyatt Bone offense. And he got behind Jawan McBride, number 30 from A and T. And so instead of going into the locker room down six, it looks like the Aggies, after the extra point, will go down 30 to 17 into the locker room. A 13-point deficit. And that does not bode well for A&T. 26 consecutive wins when scoring 30 or more points. Two, Two plays. plays. <laughs> Outside position, everybody locked up. The receivers are doing a great job blocking downfield. And you also have linemen getting downfield. Montre Jackson with the great hustle play. But this is a relaxed defense. I don't care. You can't, you can't blame the coaches for calling a prevent defense because they didn't. Guys didn't make plays. Right. And that's why if you look back on this game and you lose it because you're an a, a and fan or a and team, that's what hey, lost the game for we you. sat We sat in the locker room, A&T's locker room yesterday, and talking to Shamar Milton and Ricky Lewis, two of their top defenders, we asked Ricky and Shamar what's been the biggest problem this season. He said, you know what, we look in the mirror, yeah. and the enemy is us. That was we right we have there. made too many stupid mistakes. It's been all on us, basically, in the games that we've lost. It's about accountability and responsibility, and they weren't accountable to Alonzo Lee on that particular drive. Alonzo yeah. Lee, the defensive coordinator for A&T, 
you know, that just just can't happen. With 22 seconds left on the clock, you got to come down with. It, it was all set up by A&T deciding to punt the ball, being conservative, and letting Bethune Cookman do their thing with the Wyatt Bone. Well, and all the excitement that was going just 24 seconds ago, gone. You know, and as, as much as we've extolled the virtues of that man, Jimmy Russell, and he obviously is a tremendous talent, Eric Weems is another big yeah. play guy for Bethune Cookman, a guy who came in here with, uh, he had a four touchdown night against Savannah State. Their leading rusher from a year ago. Great receiver, 25 receptions this year, two for touchdown, now make that three. Weems, six carries and 59 yards tonight. And that will do it here for the first half of play. The quick strike of Bethune Cookman. Two play drives. Long touchdown. Eric Weems, Jimmy Russell doing it all for the Wildcats. As a result, Alvin Wyatt's team has a 30 to 17 lead here in Greensboro, North Carolina. We return you to the ESPNU studios in Mike Hall. Turn. We'll get you back to second half action with Charles and Mike right after this. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, comprised of 11 outstanding academic institutions, was established on the principles of educating and preparing student-athletes for the game of life. MEAC institutions have committed themselves to high academic standards, science and technology, scholarly research and community service. Our members represent the foundation for producing many of tomorrow's future leaders. On the playing field or in the classroom, the MEAC is continuing its proud tradition of academic and athletic excellence. It's just about to com about complete it here at Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. Bethune Cookman with a 30-17 lead over North Carolina A&T. The Aggies with a New quarterback tonight, Marshall Glenn, looking good early on. Glenn finding his tight end, Brian Johnson, for one score. And then Michael Ferguson scoring his first collegiate touchdown despite that face mask grab of his career. But Bethune Cookman running the Wyatt Bone and Jimmy Russell, the quarterback, with tech, quick reactions and speed, ripping off one touchdown run, carrying the ball, football himself. And then the backbreaker in the first half, a free play, 80 yard drive. The pitch and run by running back Eric Weems. And then after AT decided not to go for it on fourth and two, this play. The touchdown pass, Russell to Weems. So Alvin Wyatt's Bethune Cookman Wildcats on top, 30 to 17. Two drives that kill you. 80 yard drive and a 95 yard drive in that first half. They deferred, they won the toss and deferred to the second half, so Bethune Cookman will receive here. Back deep for the Wildcats, Ricky Williams, the dangerous one who had the long kickoff return for the score. Mike, you need a big play on special teams, no better time than now. Not another one if you're AT. Yeah, I'm saying AT. Corey Council for Bethune Cookman breaks a couple of tackles, breaks two more, and gets it out to the 45 yard line. The Wildcats picking up where they left off at the half. Nice catch. Bobbled a little bit, but just good, powerful running inside once he gets hit. Look, and then guys not wrapping up. You no, come in and hit. Yeah, you're hitting guys. Finally it finally took the kicker, Joseph Arroyo, to take him down. Both kickers, 81. Hi. <laughs> Jason Cortez. Yes, and Joseph Arroyo. What was my number? 81. <laughs> <laughs> not a kicker, though. <laughs> But you could if you needed to. Oh, yeah. But they gave scholarships at UCLA for that. <laughs> so this is a key defensive drive, I would say, for North Carolina team, A&T. Somehow stop this Wyatt Bone and stop that man, Jimmy Russell. Easier said than done. Well, the fullback was almost pulled around by Russell Jimmy Russell. 
Vince Wilson, watch number three inside. He's going to pull him around. He does a pirouette because Russell pulls the ball back so hard. That's a heck of a fake. That's selling out for your team. 14 yards on the carry by Russell. A master of the sleight of hand. Boy, he is... <laughs> Well, You're right, the Jamal Holloway. Uh, I, I mean, you just look at it, I, having to see that my freshman year in, in Oklahoma right. back then, that was a crown. So you couldn't see the other side of the field. Yeah. You just saw him yeah. going the other way. It looked like the curvature the of the earth, right? But look at this again. Yeah. No one there to defend it. If we could stop it on that replay, you would have saw that there was no one over on that side. So the pitch man was open and the quarterback was open. And, and I'll go out on a limb here. I, I, I think at any level, Division one, this guy would be dangerous running this this option. Because he makes good decisions. Ball security can be questionable sometimes, but you have to take chances to make plays. <laughs> Once again, that belly fake, and he keeps it himself. It's been the Jimmy Russell show so far. Shamar Milton on the tackle. A&T thought they had a fumble recovery, but Russell obviously yeah. Russell down. Yeah. Before the ball came out, hit the ground. Take another look. Stop right there. There's no one on five, so Weems could get it. But you don't see on the picture. Let it go now. There's no one inside either. So Jimmy Russell only has help from the back. Orlando Nor Norman, Norman coming. Once behind. again, caught in no man's land. you got to make a decision one way or the other. If you're going to make a mistake, make an aggressive one. Well, Norman's chasing the ball. That's what makes it so bad. It's not even that onside linebacker. Right. And in the first half, we saw a &T coming up hard, forcing Jimmy Russell to make the pitch. Right now, he's going unabated. Adjustments need to be made if you're the a &T defense. They weren't made at halftime because the same results we saw right before halftime on a three-play 80-yard drive are starting to happen again. 94 and 43 have to talk to these guys. Shamar M Milton and Ricky Lewis need to make these guys step up as Num a defense. Number three in the last carry, Vince Wilson. Uh, very highly thought of prospect by Coach Alvin White. Just a south. You'll see a lot of him. He's in the game right now, as a matter of fact. But Russell going to the air this time. Darius Butler, his favorite receiver as far as wide receivers are concerned on this night. Jonathan Fantastic Summers caught a couple Darius in the first Butler. half, and now Darius Butler. You like salt yeah, and pepper, right, Mike? Like but you don't like a lot of it. Passing to a, a, a option offense is like salt and pepper for good food. You just need a little bit of it. If you yeah. can complete the pass and you put enough pepper and salt in something, it makes it taste good. And that's what this offense is doing tonight. Mixing Inside it up. Inside their 20 tonight. A touchdown and a field goal for Bethune Cookman on three opportunities. Shamar Milton finally wrestles Jimmy Russell to the ground. That telling stat we had in the first half, 26 and 0 when scoring 30 points or more. And Bethune Cookman sitting at the 30 point mark right now with a first and goal. Shamar Milton and company, Shamar number 43, hoping to thwart this score Russell the pitch to Weems Weems just like that Touchdown. just like that way too easy tempo well their tempo was fast on that they came out with the purpose and the focus and they made it happen quickly you know you see more and more teams do this in college football they win the toss they defer to the second half. Yeah. They make the stops on defense. They get the ball back in the second half. That's exactly what Bethune Cookman has done. You go other the other key play that fourth and two that A&T had. You said go for it. Jordan go Small for it. didn't. The result it's a 14 point swing. Well, their offense was playing as good as they have played in the last few weeks, and I thought that's where you can get that momentum back, get the crowd back into it, and just really get it going the way you want to. The Wildcats 36, the Aggies 17. New kicker for Bethune Cookman, Lucas Esquivel. He gets the extra point and a 20 point lead for the Bethune Cookman Wildcats with a lot of football to go. 11.35 remaining here in the third quarter, but the flag on that last play. 
After the play, we have two dead ball personal fouls. Number 94, the kicking team. Number 64 of the defense. Those penalties offset. Boy, that has been the penalty du jour, personal <laughs> fouls. <laughs> The Wyatt Bone. Nobody does it better than Jimmy Russell and Eric Weems. Back with more after this timeout. Bethune Cookman with a 37-17 lead over North Carolina A&T, courtesy of this last drive. The running of quarterback Jimmy Russell. Bayou ability. He can get by you, or he's a walk-in closet kind of guy, or both, all the same. Making good decisions, but also running by the defense and making the proper reads. Now, he's going to handle the ball a lot. He has to make sure that he has security. This is a design pitch on the last play to Eric Weems. They've done so well with him moving inside, but when you get inside, you want quick tempo. They score. He's happy. Look at him, smiling. Guess what? Alvin Wyatt's got him around for two more years after this one. Just a sophomore. They should be a force in the next couple of years in the MEAC, that's for sure. They lost 10 of their starters on defense a year ago, so they're trying to shore up that side of the football. But this offense is ready to compete for a title now, I think. They put themselves in a position with this offense. And what, I mean, what other coach in college football? <laughs> All 11. <laughs> he's, a, he's a throwback. Cool cat. He is a throwback. He's a cool cat. Yeah. This, this is exactly how he dressed. When he come out of the locker room after playing for the Raiders, hey. he dressed exactly like hey. that. And you couldn't even see him before the game. It was, it, I was We were looking for him. And, you know. Oh, yeah, because he, he comes out at a special time. It's sort of a superstition yeah, that Alvin I mean, White has. That's what, he, that's what his assistant said anyway. <laughs> I buy it. He was, he was making the grand entrance is what he was doing. Okay, A&T, crucial drive here. Marshall Glenn still at quarterback. And the Bethune-Cookman defense doing the tight, tighten up, and we go back to the studio in my call. It's Mike and Tom here in Greensboro, North Carolina, in this MEAC matchup between Bethune-Cookman and North Carolina A&T. It has been all Wildcats of late. A&T picks up the first down, though. This is what I think riled you so much about that decision that George Small made uh, with fourth and two deciding to punt because the offense, as we talked to several people at halftime here, have watched this team all season long. A&T's offense has been as good as it's look all season. Well, they're finally getting some throws in that area where Chennis Berry is putting it, you know, dig routes are perfect for a quarterback that's coming in. Break off at 15, pick up a few more, you get an 18-yard gain on that play from Trusty by Glenn's arm. This time, Marshall deciding to pitch the football. To Sweeney, he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Well, what did I say in the first half? Why can't teams that see the option play the option well? Defend the option well. They defended it well here. If you stop here, way too quick. Look, you have three guys defending one guy, nobody to make a decision. You put no pressure on Tari and Charles. He doesn't make the tackle initially, but he will come back and clean it up. But he's carrying out his assignment, exactly. and that's what's important. They got, on, they got on them at halftime. There were adjustments made. Number 11 was one of them. Coach, we got to do a better job. Yeah. <laughs> Second down and 13. Marshall Glenn rolling to his right. He's got Brandon Trusty again. And close to a first down. Knocked out of bounds by Rodney Hughes, number 57. Marshall Glenn throws very well on the run. I've been impressed with his ability on those routes where you work outside, sprint out, sprint out, roll out type of uh, routes. He gets the ball off well, and it's coming on a roll. He's one of the 22 seniors being honored tonight here in their last home football game at Aggie Stadium. It also gives you distance to, to get closer. If you don't have a strong arm, this makes your arm strength go up even more because you get closer to the receiver as opposed to standing in a drop back position. Third and short for the Aggies. Brandon Sweeney's got the first down. Nice bit of second effort there. Rodney Hughes again on the tackle for the Wildcats. 
This, this is the best thing for Andy's defense. An offense that's picking up first down like this. Inside, good running, good hard, strong running. That's Rodney Hughes normally stops you in your tracks, but Brandon Sweeney kept it going the other way. I like those helmets, how they shine. Both teams, Bethune Cookman and North Carolina and T. Got a little glow, yeah, it's glow not, on them. It's not how you drive, it's how you arrive. You got to look good. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to look just as important to look good as it is to play good. And there goes Sweeney, who's looking good and playing good. Ball pop, pops out, but he hit the ground before that one. That player's dead, I think. I think. He's officially coming in. It doesn't look like it, Mike. We're gonna, this is very close. He hit the ground. The ball came out. Officials haven't made the signal yet. I don't think so. When they decision oh, like that, come up late. Yeah, because when they come up like that. Let's watch it again. It's doubt. No one came up pointing down. Did Sweeney go down? Ball still, he still has possession. Ball's it went out. out. It's yeah. out. Out. Good, good call. call. Good call. Definite good call. Torian Charles, the man with the recovery. Or Bobby Williams, number one, I should say. Torian arriving late to the scene. Bobby Williams, who leads Division I AA in interceptions with six, coming up with a key fumble recovery there. And that really hurts A&T's chances here. If they're not careful, this thing could turn into a, a real blowout. They're down by 20 Boy, as it is. Timeout. North Carolina A&T. That's their first charge timeout of the half. George Small, his team is up against it against the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Can they mount a comeback? We'll find out after a break here on the U. Farm, great service, great rates. That's why 40 million drivers trust State Farm. And a great performance by the Bethune-Cookman band. Made the trip from Daytona, Florida. And they're seeing their team led by head coach Alvin Wyatt and quarterback Jimmy Russell running the Wyatt bone. Yeah, believe it or not, believe it or not, A&T has run 10 more plays than Bethune-Cookman College. The problem tonight is that the Aggies have been shooting themselves in the foot, not playing assignment football, allowing runs like this to happen, three play 80-yard drives, and then crucial plays like this fumble by Brandon Sweeney, the most productive running back. And then just like that, they come up with plays like this. That'll be an incompleted pass. Close to an interception if they could get that ball. I know a t those defenders were thinking. You know who, who was really looking for it? Ricky Lewis has two touchdowns in his career. He always seems to be around the ball when it's a turnover. And that's one of those areas where they need Sutton offense. Their yep. defense has to make plays now to get them back in this ball game. Ricky Lewis, senior, originally from Mount Vernon, New York, came here in the eighth grade and instantly became buddies with Shamar Milton. They went to the same high school together. What about when we asked them who won the fight? <laughs> they would never <laughs> they, they would never say. Uh -uh. You know, you, if your best friend, you had a fight at some point well, with them. Yeah. And that made you tight because you saw, hey, he can win. He can win fights if I ever get in a fight down the street. Eric Weems, the ball carrier. Yeah, Shamar Milton on the tackle there. Mike Adamley along with Charles Arbuckle here in Greensboro, North Carolina. MEAC showdown between Bethune-Cookman and North Carolina a and from Greensboro, North Carolina. 90 miles south northeast of Charlotte, North Carolina. Short drive for you. Yeah. Fairly long <laughs> plane trip for me. But I've had a good time. I like this program down here. We've been treated like kings. Smart move by Bethune-Cookman. They're forcing them into calling another timeout. That was quick change for Punny. And then all North Carolina a t had to do was punt safe, but they tried to team, bring on their punt return team, forced them into using another timeout. You don't need those are pressures in the second half. In the, as we head back to our ESPNU studio, Mike Carls is waiting with bated <laughs> breath. <laughs> Uh, they got to get to that SC game undefeated, man. That's all. That's I think everybody's hoping for that. That would be nice. But got to let the games play themselves out, you know. So fourth and one for Bethune Cookman and uh, Davis Player back to punt for one of the few times tonight for the Wildcats. 
<laughs> and a timeout this time by Bethune Cookman. Alvin White giving that leather jacket a workout tonight. His team leads by 20. Back after this. Every move I make, I keep on leaning on the Lord. And every move I make, I keep on leaning on the Lord. I keep on leaning, I keep on leaning, I keep on leaning. That is the North Carolina A&T Full Gospel Football Choir. That was Marshall Glenn, the quarterback, who was singing. And Alonzo Lee, the defensive coordinator for the Aggies, brought that here with him. Hey, man, I had my hand raised, and now they're going oh, yeah. for it on fourth, fourth down. That was all those timeouts that they did. They made sure. <laughs> And, and, boy, that's like rubbing salt into the wound. George Small didn't go for go for it on fourth and two right before the half. Bethune Cookman made him pay. Alvin White made him pay again right there. It made A&T waste the time out here when they could use it at some point later in this half. Mm. Boy, if their defense could, could play as well as that gospel choir can sing. They form, perform all the time. Wow, that last play. Russell is just pulling Vince Wilson back. And the fake is so good that you don't know where the ball's going. Unbelievable. Watch, watch the fake when you see this. Stop right there. You see, everybody's going that way if you have blue jersey. Keep it going. Now it opens that hole up. It's a natural thing, and he's pulling Vince Wilson around so fast that the defenders don't even know. And j just 5'9", Jimmy Russell barreling over Wilford Billingsley. And that time he puts the ball on the ground. Weems fortunate to pick it up, but it was a forward lateral. Well, it, it really, he gets hit, and the ball comes out, so do they call out an incomplete pass? pass? Yes. Watch when he stops, when, if we see this replay. See what the official is going to yeah, call. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you throw it underhanded. Yeah. It's still a pass. Still a pass. He's yeah, going to watch it. He's, he yep. throws it down in yep. front. Yep. Good, good move by Jimmy Russell again, though. If he throws that ball back. It's that was Lawrence, Lawrence McLeod in the game who, was, who quickly left the game and replaced <laughs> by Russell. He still made a good decision. Yeah, it could have been disastrous. Had it been behind him, it would have been a, a lateral. Justin Carter. The outside linebacker for a &T. Virginia Beach, Virginia. A lot of good talent comes out of there. That's why Vitek is so strong now. Virginia. Yep. Perennially really strong team, but Virginia Tech is just really taking the lead in that Virginia Beach area. Right. Some. I remember a guy named up here. I am dating myself <laughs> again. Leroy Keys who is hey. from Newport News, Virginia. Man. Think of uh, Bruce Smith, yeah. Reggie Langhorne. Yeah. yeah. I played Cleveland with that. Brown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some good good players out there, along with the Vic brothers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alvin. I mean, Allen the Iverson. Russell's pass overthrown, and we've got a we've got a we've got another personal foul. There's a flag on the play. When they come at this point, you know it's frustration by the def defense of A and T. The officials have had some conferences tonight. Theron Thomas in the middle of that for North Carolina A&T. He wants to know, did I do something wrong? Well, and we didn't talk about it much, but the Dudley High connection, they yeah. take that away good. That's a good call. Yeah. You know, you still got to make, yeah, let him make a play. The ball's uncatchable. Flag is waved off. Theron Thomas, Great Ricky Lewis, and Shamar Milton, starters on this defense, all from Dudley High School right here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Got a little pipeline of players coming from there. Yeah. You know, they don't have the budgets that down, right the Division the one, 1A one schools have. and Drive to it. Yeah, he come around this program, grew up around the program. Darren Thomas, since he was four years old. 
and they're not without success. North Carolina AGF for sure. They won the BA championship just just two years ago, but they're in transition right now. That's for sure. They'll take over at their own 14-yard line. You can see George Small's record, his first year on the job. He won the MEAC championship, dropped a 3-8 a year ago, which was disappointing for everyone. And so far, 2005, despite the bright prospects that yeah. tonight had, 3-5 well, three and, three and just isn't cutting it either. Well, Mike, he made some good points when we talked. He didn't complain about not no, being didn't. able to recruit. But think about it. North Carolina, North Carolina State. Duke, Wake Forest, um, Winston-Salem State. For a state this size, they have a lot of universities here to compete for talent. So you can see transfers coming in, but when you don't have a good budget, I mean, I can name more if you want me to, but right. there's a lot of schools right in this area that you compete for talent with. Now, Bethune-Cookman, on the other hand, oh, Florida. Is Florida a good recruiting area? I know I'm from Texas. I don't know about well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really know. I, 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 I'll say this. <laughs> about you can take second stringers in Florida high schools oh, yeah. and they get but they get picked up by a lot of um, they're on everybody's radar but think about it a few years back as early as the 70s that's not that far ago long ago the people. other the other the other problem Florida state Florida right Miami they weren't good then yeah and the other problem was is that back in the early 70s schools like those schools and then Alabama and Georgia and LSU didn't recruit didn't recruit that's they right. didn't well they recruited but they didn't recruit African-American kids that's nope. why the HBCUs were so strong and have come back think of it Florida a and think of Grambling State all those sure. kids that couldn't go to school there in the 60s as early as, as close as the early 70s right. went to schools where their parents went to school. Bethune Cookman, MEAC champions back in 1984 and 1988, also 0 2. That one was under Alvin Wyatt, began their football odyssey back in 1925, a storied program, and now it is Division One AA, moved to that division and back in 1980. The great Larry Little from the Miami Dolphins in the National Football League Hall of Fame was a coach here at Bethune Cookman. Wide open, Brian Trusty overthrown. Larry Summers had a chance for a pick, dropped the football. He is the only returning defensive starter for Bethune Cookman. Had four INTs last year. Also, one on this season for a touchdown. Could have had another pick. Just dropped that. Short arm. You know, George Smalley said he, if he could ask the fans one thing, it would be patience. Have a little patience. Well, <laughs> something we all know about college football fans, whether you're an alum at the University of Michigan or an alum here at North Carolina A&T, patience is not part of their, their, no. their M.O. No, no, it's not. <laughs> It's a thin line between love and hate. <laughs> that's, the, that's the relationship between fans and coaches, as well as the starting quarterback a lot of times. Marshall just had nobody to throw to that time. Marshall Glenn swarmed under by a host of tacklers. Andre Johnson back up defensive end. Andre Johnson. He's in the game now. And, Mike, we talk about recruiting bases. That's why Hampton is so strong. When you're in that area, in that Virginia area, D.C., right. there's a lot of talent right there. So you can be Sam U is down now, but you know at some point they're going to come back again strong. a and as strong as they've been, they also have recruits that are now trying to get in. There's a lot of yellow on my board. That normally means freshmen, and they have a lot of them playing significant time. And that's why we've seen the number of transfers you were talking about earlier. You recruit a guy maybe once, twice, three times. You know, you chart his progress. If they're not happy, if they're not doing well at a Division I school, stay on them. Well, and, and you think about it, on your 2D boards, you normally see one or two on this offense sprinkled in in the 2D jump chart. The one, two, three, four, five significant players. Not all starters. Clear dealing. And... That just goes to show you what you are up against. On defense, four more. So when you have a lot of young players playing, you need patience, but the fans don't always see that. So a three and out for A&T, and Bethune Cookman will get the football again with terrific field position, just exactly what North Carolina A&T doesn't need right now. There's a flag on the play. But a flag on the play. Mike, Kavari Daly. <laughs> 
What are you doing out there, young man? I think the coach was saying, okay, now, let me, help me understand this. <laughs> we have this lead and, you, and you're not doing what, what, what I ask you. A lot of penalties tonight. Delay a game on the... Oh, the fair catch in there. <laughs> yeah. But what he tried to do is go over to the sideline and act like he was handing the official the football. <laughs> That's what I said. Okay, now help me understand this. You call the fair catch, catch. and then you take off with it. <laughs> Coyla Daly, the man who called for the fair catch. Thune Cookman leading by 20 here, 37-17 with 4-10 remaining in the third quarter. Wilson on the carry. Lawrence McLeod back in at quarterback. No gain on the play exactly. And he may stay there for the rest of the night. Good defense right there. Against Wilson, one of the few times we've seen that dive back taken away, right away, swallowed up by about three defense, three or four defenders for North Carolina AT. The Aggies need a play. They have to make a play now. Because the more minutes that tick off that clock, the less chances. This offense is not an offense that can be behind as much as they are. They have to either make a play on defense, find some kind of way to get this game close again. And there's that quick inside handoff. We talked about that young man's ability. Vince Wilson from Daytona Beach. They're all from Daytona Beach. From Bethune Goodman. You know, but Alvin White said this kid has got a chance to be very special. Uh, he just shows good, strong running inside. Yeah. Built low to the ground. Yeah. You can see why he's high on it. 5'9", 190 pounds. He'll put on another 10 before his next season. Cloud taking it inside himself. Brought down by Ricky Lewis, number 94. Mike, let's make mention also, too, you think about this anti defense. After they won the championship a few years ago, lost Herbert Dixon in a tragic manner. He's a linebacker, a very focal point of their defense. And, you know, that, that has stuck with a lot of these guys. If you talk, talk to the people in the program, that's one of the things that when you lose a player, of his magnitude and just the, the whole way that works against against your ball club you know the amazing thing about college football as you so well know charles is the people that you make as friends here during your four years or five years at an institution are friends for life because you share the same experiences together you grew up together and whether your team was nine and three and a champion or three and nine and an also ran in conference play you'll remember these guys for the rest of your life and you'll stay friends with most of them for the rest your life what do you miss most about once you leave the game it's the camaraderie your teammates the things you just the crazy jostling that you do on the elevator when you're going up or going down the mills and just the just the things that you remember about certain guys it never leaves you. Shamar Milton for example the uh, outstanding inside linebacker for North Carolina A&T this December he's gonna get a business degree business management he'll probably be, get, be a big time uh, entrepreneur down here in North Carolina but he'll be friends with all these guys for the rest of his life well, the problem is right now the business of stopping Jimmy Russell is not going well for this AT defense and <laughs> you can look ahead but right now this defense has had opportunities to make plays, and now that you have Lawrence McLeod in the game and Eric Weems is still there, Richard Woodbury, there's a whole host of people that are making plays for this Bethune-Cookman right. offense. How about that for some razzle-dazzle? Jonathan Summers, somebody got laid out, and a flag down on the play. Johnny Woo! Santiago had a great block. Uh, yeah, and Wilfred Billingsley. <laughs> you could hear, he, hey. <laughs> it was legal too. Cold cocked him. Hey, we, we don't even have to. The fans made the call for yeah, us yeah, on that. Could, 
That's going to come back. That's going to come back, but, but you gotta it see will not block. negate wow. the block. Johnny what was that play anyway? <laughs> it was an option reverse, but Johnny Santiago, 78, just had a crushing yeah, 78 block. on number 26. Here it comes. He's going to peel off. The play is coming back. Right here, Santiago. 26. Ear hole. D cleater, ear hole, <laughs> pancake, whatever you want to call it. Highlight reel. Yeah. Johnny Santiago stands 6'6, weighs 332 pounds, leveling a kid who's 5'11, 195. It's not fair. My grandmother would say that, baby. That ain't fair. Why can that boy do that to <laughs> That's him? like you trucking me, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> My teeth were rattling up here. Bethune's got it going with another quarterback running the show. Lawrence McLeod gains about two. McLeod was granted a six year by the NCAA. And uh, getting the opportunity to play. He almost lost that football right there. Yep. <laughs> he had it on his shoulder pad. I thought that was going to come out. We've seen some big hits. <laughs> some, uh, these guys are fired up, man. I love it. <laughs> coach, coach Wise still coaching. Still coaching. <laughs> big night for the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. They have a 37 17 lead here in the third quarter play from Greensboro, North Carolina. That's the end of the third. Back with the fourth after this. You better, especially the UCLA game before my friend here goes uh, nuts. Oh, that's not true. You just asked about Northwestern. Well, that's okay. It's good I mean, to that's, know. It's good to know, though. Yeah, it is good to know. <laughs> I was just thinking, what's the score there? Yeah. Last time I checked, Michigan was up by 10. Bethune Cookman up by 20, and McLeod going for it all, looking for Jonathan Summers thrown behind him. Jonathan getting a hand on it, and lucky to do that. That'll set up a third and ten. Jonathan Summers doesn't catch the ball a whole lot. 17 receptions, three touchdowns, but 21.6 yard average per catch. Right now, if he caught one for about uh, 15, they'd be happy. Oh, yeah. Well, 19. <laughs> 15 would give him the first 19 TD. Right. And Alvin Wyatt not about to call off the dogs just yet. That's for sure. The cloud keeping the ball. Might have been a better decision to pitch it out to Eric Weems, number five, who's got the speed. Rhythm and decision making. Russell does a much, you can see why Jimmy Russell yeah. is a starter. And even though McLeod has a lot of experience, so he's a player down, I think he got up. But you, even his offensive lineman, that's bad when you when Fred Nolan comes to you and tells you, you should have pitched that ball. Now, Fred, you are 600, 300 just, pounds. Just get out of my walk face. Over to the side Yeah, line. go bother somebody else. But he, Fred was right, though. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Cortez on to attempt, or uh, Lewis, Lucas Esquivel. Field goal attempt is good. 34 yards away. The second kicker that uh, Alvin Wyatt has used tonight. Jesus Cortez had a field goal earlier. Now Esquivel has got one to his credit. The ESPN College Football Encyclopedia is the biggest, richest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. It's got profiles, box scores, Heisman race breakdowns, records and statistical leaders, and the fight song lyrics of all 119 Division I programs. Even Arbuckle and Adam Lee are listed in it. The Ivy Leagues and most prominent historically black colleges dating back to 19 or 1869. I think Alvin Wyatt is probably in there, too. Yeah, Alvin Wyatt definitely is in it. <laughs> he was the Deion Sanders of his time. Yes, he was. And George Small was a very good linebacker in his own right here at North Carolina a &T. Interesting to have two alumnus and two yep. former players at that school All as well. conference yeah. players. Yeah. Alvin was an All-American, 34 career interceptions for the Wildcats. Wow. <laughs> 
If he played the same way he dressed tonight, he was bad. <laughs> <laughs> he was a bad dude. He was definitely a bad dude. Because I like that. I like I that. Look at his dress. Oh, got the cowboy the, boots on. Those oh, got to be rattleskin, hey, no, right? Oh, oh, ostrich. 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 Oh, ostrich. Yeah, I take that back. <laughs> he's, he's, oh. oh he's, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, got to look sharp oh, to be sharp, sharp to play sharp. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm pulling them back for you. You sure are. <laughs> Come on, give me an Apollo Creed, huh? <laughs> you know, he... <laughs> oh. He played with Carl Weathers at the Oakland Raiders. Quante Spate on the return. Quante Spate. Takes the ball across the 30. Here's a, here's a, a night in the life the of a head football coach. <laughs> Teaching, preaching, glasses on, glasses off. Get into the player's face. I, I bet get you, in the referee's face. I bet you he says it weekly. I can still play. If I if I was playing, I bet you I can just tell by his demeanor. Yeah. He's like us. He still thinks he can get out oh, there. Oh, I know and go. he does. He'll I get know 35 he tonight if you put him oh. out there. He thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm still trying to catch 78 in college. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he said he used to love the, the going up against the big receivers like oh, Otis yeah. Taylor, guys who are 6'4". Hey, and, and then they mean catch, too. Oh, oh. Albert Ben. I mean, big, 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 big wide receivers Charlie in the National Taylor, Football League. Yeah. Charlie Sanders. Na yeah, in the National Football League. Then they took away, they changed the rules oh. and took the, uh, the Chuck rule out. Oh, okay. And he said all of a sudden, <laughs> I was toast, man. <laughs> Marshall Glenn still checking it for AT and A and T. Well, Curtis Wall is the receiver on that play. I really like how Marshall Glenn has played when he's had a chance. You know, talked about not having a very strong arm, but when he's throwing the ball, they've, they've shortened the, the stride now. See, when he runs over there, that cuts off about 10 yards off of that throw. It's a more direct throw, so it's a good decision by Chennis Berry of moving him out of the pocket. If he makes that from the pocket that adds another 10 to 15 yards. Right. Very, very accurate, short range, medium range passer. Pass pop. You can hear it from up here. Charles, some interesting news from our ESPNU studios. Mike, what is it? Well, yeah, he is. Get away from me now. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get Marshall Glenn out to the other what, side. What a job Carl Durrell has had uh, done out there. You talk about the pressure being on. Yep. <laughs> when you have USC playing as well as they have the last few years. <laughs> and everybody's basically forgotten about your program. Friends become foe. <laughs> and in California, as fickle as it can be at times, it's good to see for Carl. I'll tell you what, that's going to be some kind of football game, too. Mike Adamley and... Charles Arbuckle, Northwestern Wildcat, UCLA Bruin, here in Greensboro, North Carolina, watching Bethune Cookman do a number on North Carolina A&T. They won a year ago, 45-17. Bethune Cookman did. Tonight they lead 40 to 17. Marshall Glenn, however, go! Oh, he had a man wide open. That is incomplete. Doug Brown had it on his fingertips. That ball was right there, Charles. We've seen about four drops out of these receivers tonight. You gotta help your quarterback. You have to help him out. He can't put it in any better place. And and like you said, uh, uh, Rocky Apollo. There is no tomorrow. <laughs> Man, you gotta catch that. I mean, I'm a receiver, and I don't. I mean, you can't hide that. Marshall Glenn has. Not, and the thing I like about him, he hasn't come over and gotten anybody's face. But right no. there, he deserves to because you have to make that catch, Doug Brown. Help him out. You're on the choir together. Even though he's singing solo, don't it, be. Yeah. Don't, help him out. And Brown's a guy who's a fifth all-time leading receiver with over 1,400 yards here at A&T. Tough second half for North Carolina A&T. They trail 40 to 17 in what was billed as a showdown in a MIAC. Senior night here in Greensboro, North Carolina has not gone the way that North Carolina A&T had hoped for its 22 seniors playing their final home game here. They played great in the first half, but it's fallen apart here in the second half as Bethune-Cookman and that Wyatt Bone 
have just been able to do what they want against this A&T defense. Michael Dunn now in at quarterback, a freshman from Orlando, Florida. He'll get his turn to run the Wyatt Bone. And showing off some similar skills to Jimmy Russell. <laughs> That cutback run is devastating, has been devastating tonight for Bethune. Larry Harrison on the tackle. You have another guy coming in. You get a chance to see Larry Harrison with a nice stop. Defensive lineman getting down the field, stopping a first down. Even though it's second and one. Talk about guys who have transferred. He had gone to Harrison was a had gone to University of Michigan. Well, out of Detroit. Yep. You know, you find a place to play, and I think that's what happens with guys that want to play and go somewhere and get disenfranchised, want to get closer to home. Well, Larry Harrison didn't go to Detroit. He went to Michigan and said, okay, let me find somewhere else. Greensboro, North Carolina. There's always a story of why, but it just they lands here, and that's perfect for this program. Chauncey Hampton now the be back. Lucky to get that pitch off. Wilbur Johnson being very disruptive. Number 27 for the Aggies. Well, and, and Ricky Lewis was the one that hit Dunn. Or Gunn, excuse me, just comes in. <laughs> yeah, watch, watch Michael Dunn. Releases the ball a little bit late. Man, that was a nice shot. Yeah, nice job by Corey Council, number six, to just get a handle on that pitch. So Alvin Wyatt emptying the bench for the Wildcats now. Giving a lot of his younger players some valuable PT. Even though there's 11-10 to go here in the final quarter. Council gets the ball again on the pitch. It's two plays in a row. Ricky Lewis in the backfield. So you, you talk about guys not quitting. You don't have to worry about 94. No, no. 20 career sacks. 250 career tackles and two touchdowns 94 has had a great career here in Greensboro North Carolina and right up the street with Dudley and he's a guy who thinks he's got a shot at the next level and you know what it, it, it's not uncommon to come around these parts and see the occasional NFL scout <laughs> they have a few come out here <laughs> they have some guys that can make it out of here he thinks he can be one of them yeah has the body could be a kind of that in between that, that tweener, yeah yep. you know stand up off the down. edge got nice speed Jimmy Russell, how do you know it's over? Well, he's got those little hand warmers on. What kind of night has he had? Oh, he was just he's outstanding in running that option tonight. Making good decisions. Just, they say he's not quick, but Mike are fast. Yeah, but I, I kind of disagree. Yeah, I, I disagree with that. What I was surprised at was oh, his arm. He has a nice arm. Put the ball. Look at that. Flag route. Where are you supposed to draw? That little orange pylon. That's where, what they call yeah, the flag. Exactly. He catches it on the right. flag. And where the done. where the, only the receiver can get it. Now he's on the bench. He's done. <laughs> Wanting to come back in, I'm sure. <laughs> Between these two schools, they currently have seven players in the National Football League right now. Scouts will find you. They'll, go, yep. they'll find you. Nick Collins was a second draft choice for Bethune-Cookman by the Green Bay Packers this year. 2003, Rashawn Mathis, defensive back, drafted in the second round by the Jaguars. Big play there, Dean to number 85. I got to dig deep for this one. Joshua King. Oops. Paul Newfield. Oh, Paul Newfield. Number 85. Backs up Jonathan Summers, a junior from Miami, Florida. Dean Rowland. Newfield breaks the tackle and does the rest. Michael Dunn with a nice throw down the field. <laughs> and that's a good broken tackle. Wilford bring it, Billingsley finally knocking him out of bounds at about the five, four yard line. First and goal, Wildcats. 
And look, Lawrence McLeod now back in the game. The pitch to Woodbury. Just outside the pylon. Oh, they're gonna they're signaling touchdown. Woodbury made that touchdown. He, you know how he made he greeted some space, almost like a point guard or a shooting guard when they step inside and back out over the three-point uh -huh. line. That little dip inside, if we see it set on the replay, set it, yeah. set it up perfect. All takes a little shoulder yeah. drop. And, and that's going to freeze the defender just enough. Either you can run over him or you can run by him. That was a nice play by Woodbury getting outside. Esquivel on to attempt the extra point. The second, second kicker that Alvin Wyatt has used tonight. Jesus Cortez being the other. And it's up and it's good. Extra point attempt is good. 10 minutes, 31 seconds left to go. The pass by Michael Dean that set up the last Bethune-Cookman touchdown. 47-17. Still a lot of football remains. Check us out! A doctoral research institution, North Carolina A&T State University produces the best and brightest. Since 1891, A&T has been making positive strides and showing Aggie pride worldwide. Now under the helm of Chancellor James C. Rennick. Explore. Discover. Become. Check us out. Up and see in the score, 47 to 17. The blue and gold marching machine hasn't given up. They're still tearing it up in the stands. On senior night here at North Carolina A&T, and quite a night for that man, Bethune Cookman head coach Alvin Wyatt. A&T made a goal of it for most of the first half. A critical fourth and two decision where they decided to punt. And a subsequent three-play 80-yard drive by Bethune Cookman kind of put this game out of hand. And in the second half, it has been all Wildcats. Quante Spate, the man on the return there for A&T. Quante, just a sophomore with a bright future here in A&T. You know, in games like this, when they become blowouts, you still take the opportunity, especially for your underclassmen, to make the most of it, you know? Show the coaches what you have. Well, you want to do it for yourself, but also for these seniors that are going out. Yeah. You want to fight as hard as you can, because you know they're going to do the same thing for you the last few games of the season. Marshall Glenn still in at quarterback for, for the uh, Aggies. Mike, I think that was the one thing we talked about, too, when we got all of those guys together. Marshall Glenn, Ricky, Ricky Lewis, Shamar Milton. Uh, you know, one of the things is, and Brandon Sweeney, how have you kept these guys together? Because most of them are senior leaders. And it's tough when you're losing. People start pointing the finger. As much as you remember the good on teams, you also remember bad. And it doesn't seem like they've let that get out of hand. It doesn't seem like George Small has allowed them to kind of come, become disengaged with what they're doing, the process. Yeah, you know what? And it's, it's probably been pretty tough because as sophomores, they won the MEAC championship, and they've gone downhill from there. And, and not to leave on a high note is, is got to hurt. Pass is incomplete. Glenn's pass intended for Doug Brown misses the mark. One of the few times he's missed the mark tonight. Marshall Glenn is really, despite the score, has turned in a, 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 a valiant effort for the Aggies. No question about it. Out of Charlotte, North Carolina, East Mecklenburg High School. Talking to a lot of the, the radio regulars here at halftime, and they said this is as good as our team has played offensively, not in just the last couple of weeks, but all season long. And he's playing like a quarterback should, relax, doing the things, taking what the defense has given him. You know, has respectable numbers there with one touchdown to Brian Johnson. So he, I, he's handled it. He's done well. Even though he's not the guy, he's played very well tonight. Yeah. 
And it really hasn't been so much A&T's offense as the defense not being able to handle the Wyatt phone. And it should be probably 17 out of 23 as opposed to 13. Yeah, he's had four drop balls. Brandon Trusty, his most trusted wide receiver, has had a couple of drops. Doug Brown has a, had a drop. Doesn't help you when you have your receivers dropping the rock. Brown, as a matter of fact, was uh, was wide open, and that one yeah. looked like he had six. Oh, for a touchdown, yeah. So another putting situation, fourth and five. Dominic Brown. Leg getting a workout tonight. Talking about patience, that wasn't much patience on that fake. No. Never got a chance to develop. Never worked itself out. Dominique Brown. And it'll be first and ten for the now you put your defense in, in really dire straits. Lawrence McLeod coming back in at quarterback for Bethune Cookman. Jimmy Russell's night is done, has been done for most of this quarter. 30 point Wildcat lead. And you would think with 9.13 to go, it did, for the most part, keep it on the ground. That's what they do best. So yeah. <laughs> it plays into their strength. One of the most lopsided, if not the most lopsided score in uh, Bethune-Cookman history was the number that A&T laid on them back in 1996, 73-7. It has rankled uh, Alvin Wyatt, who was the coach back then, ever since. It is why th these two schools have been not bitter rivals, but cer certainly acrimonious rivals. <laughs> but I don't think Alvin's the kind of guy that's going to run up the score here do what you do run the football run out the clock run the pitch run the Wyatt bone give McLeod some playing time he's a senior and you give other people the keeper. other people chances to play some of your younger folks that you know you want to take a look at you want to get comfortable with game situation because I don't care how much you do in practice it never equates to the game the big thing, too, is, is to give their next opponent, Mighty Hampton, something to think about. They've got a murderer's row, Alvin White calls it, their last three games. Hampton, Howard, and Florida A&M. That last game was on uh, against FAMU was uh, on ESPNU. But the Hampton against the number three Division I AA team in the country. McLeod on the key. No. Undefeated in MEAC play as well, obviously. Well, it's easy to see why you would think Bethune-Cookman would be looking past this game. Hampton, Howard, and then Florida A&M. Bit of rivalry there. You know, rivalry game in state. But Hampton, tough opponent. But when you play like this, the way they played tonight. If they win out, they would still be a long shot to win the MEAC title, obviously, because uh, Hampton is undefeated. But they definitely have a bona fide shot at a berth in the Division I AA playoffs. McLeod. And another flag on the play. Corey Council, the ball carrier. The thing we didn't talk about also, too, is that these offensive linemen do a very good job of cut blocking, but the receivers downfield, they create those other spaces for you because they make sure that they get the defensive linemen down. It's going to come back. But this offensive line, you can't say enough about what they do. They don't get a lot of credit. We no. talk about Jimmy Russell, but Johnny Santiago, you saw him earlier, Fred Nolan. Vernon Edwards. Vernon Edwards. Riondo Lee, Terrence Massey. You know, and you talked about the wide receivers being blocking downfield. That's an integral part of this Wyatt Bone. They were, they were required to do that. And Barry Wagner, who's yeah, a <laughs> great <laughs> arena football league player, 
He, he helps with the wide receivers at Bethune Cookman. He says that what I try to teach these kids the most is is to always make sure you're doing something when you don't have the football. And Barry would know because yeah. in the Arena Football League, as you well know, both sides. You're Iron Man. He plays defensive back and he's an offensive guy, so he can tell them what he's telling them, and he's actually doing it right now. They can see him in Arena Football ball games practicing what he preaches. Yeah, one of the greatest players ever, if not the greatest player ever in Arena Football history. Spent some time with him in Indianapolis as a he was a young guy coming in, played, <laughs> and it was good for him at that level, but he also had a chance to be a, a great star in the AFL. And that was a young guy who just scored sophomore Justin Brannon from Jacksonville, Florida. And the points just keep on piling up for Bethune Cookman. Everybody getting into the act. Davis player, number 38, there to hold for Lucas Esquivel. Well, they've hit all the wrong notes tonight, AT&T, but their sweet songs of the choir will get us through the night, huh? The Bethune Cookman Marching Band giving a little, little as na 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 na. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, the football game has left a little bit something to be desired here, especially in the second quarter. But the uh, hospitality here in Greensboro, North Carolina, couldn't be any better. Brian Holloway, the SID for North Carolina A&T, and Brian Harvey, his counterpart for Bethune Cookman have given us more than enough statistics to fill the rest of this telecast that's for sure they've been so helpful all week long also like to thank our statistician eric moore our north carolina a t spotter tyler ball man he's dying a thousand deaths up here he <laughs> plus he doesn't have a jacket and it's getting cold here. i think we're, we're sub we're sub 45 degrees now that's for sure can you you can i get yeah you can see your breath we still have 601 left to go. A and T, despite the score, just keeps on keeping on. And that's all you can ask of a college football team in this kind of situation. Uh, with the famous alumni that they have and also just the alumni and all the things they put into this place and, and the list is long of, of, of people that have come through the a &T system there's a player down the Bethune Cookman yeah. fans are restless and they don't want to see this kind of situation they don't want to see a team a, a, a tradition that they've had here for so long go to waste and I think that's what they're feeling as, as a fan base yep. Eric English the injured wildcat on the play being helped off the field they've been playing football for over 80 years here notable alumni how about Jesse Jackson and Dr. Ronald McNair who is a uh, perished in the space shuttle Challenger tra tragedy Alvin Adels NBA player and coach, also VP of the Golden State Warriors. Let's not forget Elvin Bethea inducted into the Pro oh, yeah. Football Hall of Fame in 2003. You know him well from his Houston. days with the Oilers and growing Love up in Houston, blue. man. Love, Love you, blue. blue. Yeah. Houston Oilers. <laughs> Houston Oilers. No, we won't, we won't start with that. Not after hearing the gospel choir. I'll, oh, no. I'll yeah, never get to sing again on television no. after listening to I them. Will, I will stop. I will stop. And we go back to the ESPNU studios for this Texas update from Mike Hall. On cue, I said Houston Oilers. What else comes from Houston? Or not Houston, but Texas. The Bell ice cream. Yeah, oh, yeah. There and the go. Texas Longhorns. <laughs> Mike Hall was listening to us in that studio, and we talked about the Houston Oilers. Elvin Bethea, outstanding. That, that's 
Pittsburgh, this, you know, I don't like the city of Pittsburgh. I, I, I like the people there. <laughs> but we couldn't beat them when you're growing up in Houston. You see Elvin but there, Dwayne Board. Yeah, Dwayne, a great San Francisco 49ers, got a couple of Super Bowl rings. Jermaine Stevens, the Steelers' number one pick in 1996, speaking of the Steelers. I was there when Elvin found out that he at the Super Bowl in San Diego when uh, they announced the the five inductees into the National Football League Hall of Fame there. Interviewed Elvin. Boy, he's a great player. That's a, 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 a small list of people. HOF alumni. Yeah. <laughs> Hall of Fame. That's what you play this game for, whether it's college or pro. Alvin Wyatt used to coach for... Uh, Bethune Cookman All American Hall of who's NFL Hall of Famer Larry Little. And he's got the coffee. So you got a mocha or a latte? What do you think? <laughs> I just think it's plain coffee or hot chocolate. But with that outfit, Without he's fit, no, not going to get it on there. I guarantee you. He's not going to spill it on that outfit or no, those shoes. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> we were wondering what kind of car he drives. Uh oh. That. Could have been one where he may have spilled. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that's, oh, no, it is going to be one. You know, 34 interceptions on his career. Yeah. He's going to say, now, if that was me, that would have been 35 that, for six. That's right. Jer Jeremiah Jenkins. I go no. <laughs> no, he's not even sweating it. That's right. No. <laughs> Uh, you know what? The one thing about about Al, he's got great personality. He's a wonderful motivator. The kids love him. Yeah. He doesn't have to tell stories about back in the day. He, this, ble he bleeds this program. Too. Yeah, oh boy, he sure does. Uh, he he has worn just about every hat yeah. that a that a guy can wear at a university. He's been the head women's basketball coach for 17. And he was telling me the other day that he did not lobby for the job. He waited until, even though he was an All-American football player there, he never lobbied for the head coaching job. He said, I let them come to me. And if they wanted me, I figured the time was right. Well, didn't he babysit a lot of these kids? Also? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they're aunts or well you know, it, it, bobby williams for instance who leads division one double a as we look at george small the a and t coach bobby williams who is his starting free safety and leads division one double a in interceptions with six his aunt was a player on a team that alvin white coached wow on the women's basketball team And one of the reasons, if you can see why, <laughs> good talent, but also a lot of kids from Daytona Beach. That's right. Like that Coyla Daly from Sunrise, Florida. Number 89, he just kept on going. He's a transfer, too. Started his college career at Purdue. You know, a lot of, you know, the, the home sweet home, there's something to be said yeah. for that phrase. You go far away to a Big Ten school in the Midwest, it gets cold in the wintertime. You know, yeah. you, you forget how nice Florida was. <laughs> you're right. And if you're second or third team and it doesn't look like you're going to get off much high, go up much higher in the depth charts because of coaching or whatever, or talent, you know, coming back to a place like uh, Bethune Cookman yeah. or North Carolina AT to get an opportunity is exactly right. Take it. Devin Bradley, number 17, or that's 37 now, and with the, the ball carrier, Brannon. Talk about Wildcat interception leaders since 02. Nick Collins, Rashawn Mathis, and Bobby Williams. Ranks right up there with them, six yep. on the season. Wants to be along with those guys at that proverbial next level. Yep, from everything I've heard from, he's definitely draftable guy. Devin Bradley on the a keeper. high draft choice. Takes the ball across the 40. Devin Bradley the taking the ball across the 40-yard line. Freshman from Daytona. You know they don't have they don't have a, there's a stadium to call their own. They play in a city stadium, municipal stadium down there. Don't have much in the way of facilities. <laughs> At least that's what they said. That's what, that's what that's what Alvin. You know. <laughs> but you know it doesn't hurt being in a recruiting mecca like Florida. I don't care what you say. And having so many guys homegrown, that 
know about BCC. It doesn't hurt you. Because if you want to play at the next level, you go to schools where coaches have played, and the coaches are chewing them out with the coffee. Yeah. But you go to schools where you know there's been people that have played, and team one of them, example. But also, too, where they have the ability to have folks that know. They know Alvin. Alvin Williams is, is going to lobby for his players, like George Smallwood, right, to get to that next level. If they And if they make it, it's on them. Now I wonder I, what I what I want to know, Charles. Who goes get? Is it the grad assistant that has oh, to go out and get the a, coffee? There's a runner. Somebody's <laughs> running to go get that coffee because it's too cold to walk. You know tonight. what? And, and it's it's from a local. Sh I don't think that's the the stuff they sell sell here at the stadium. It, it probably is. It, that looks not. like designer. Those are designer cups, not Starbucks. But there's. They're, <laughs> <laughs> But it hadn't spilled. I'm just telling you, it is not going to get on that outfit. No, no. It's holding. I got it. <laughs> hey, keeping the hands warm while I'm chewing you out. You're supposed to be on the field. I told you. It, it reminds me of my dad when you go to the mall or something, and he, under his clenched teeth, is telling you what you should have done. <laughs> now he's going to tell the ref. That's right. Don't come over here to my sideline telling me. I think all the ref wanted was a sip of the coffee. <laughs> They've all got it now. <laughs> oh, man. You know, you know what? How about, how about getting this thing over with? It's, there's one minute and 32 hey, seconds to go. That, that classic, <laughs> after I, I chewed somebody, I laughed. <laughs> you saw, you, you saw that? Now, I don't know if you saw that. He just had that. <laughs> uh -huh, like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, we had a good game, though, in that, up until that time with that three-play, 80-yard drive, just fourth and two. I mean, I go back to this ball game, and fourth and two, to me, is what, what should be written in the papers. It's going to be what's said on this campus. Right. And that's why this team is celebrating, and one team is. Maybe it, it would have stayed, it would have still been a, a, a lopsided game. But you just never know. I think with that offense moving the way it was, the running game working for them in the first half, fourth and two, you have nothing to lose. Senior night, try that play. Because you don't want to give them the ball. The field is short with them wherever it is. Right. Well, Bethune-Cookman will run their overall record to 6-2 and two after tonight's victory. They'll be 3-2 and two in conference play. And look out for next week because they host Hampton. Number three in Division 1AA in the country. And the Wyatt Bone will need to be operating on all cylinders. And Jimmy Russell will have to bring his AA game, his A-plus game, <laughs> if they're going to have a shot. Well, fortunately for them, they have it at home. Home stadium holds about 10,000. So they will be screaming mad down in, at that home stadium there. You look on the other side, North Carolina a t with FAMU and the South Carolina State. And see the standings here. A&T will drop to three and six overall, and Bethune-Cookman will move to six and two. Tough to go out in a night like this, final home game. This is uh, for the local, the fans here. They don't get a chance to go on the road and follow the team. It's going to leave a, leave a bitter taste in their mouth for this program. Well, but for all the alumni, though, this is an opportunity to showcase a, a, a great institution with yep. a lot of notable alumni. But also, too, I don't always know if t TV does it justice, but the things that they've done here as improvement for this school to help them not only recruit, but to get back into the MEAC race, so to speak. I mean, Hampton and... Bethune Cookman, you can see slowly creeping up there with, with their ability, but AT is not a school without tradition either. You know, we said this a couple of weeks ago covering the Jackson State Alabama State game. The one thing that impressed me most about the MEAC and the SWAC conference is not just the caliber of play. We've known that's been good for a long time, but the caliber of coaching. Oh, yeah. George Small and that man, Alvin Wyatt, do great jobs. Great job. There is there is innovative, especially Alvin Wyatt, and is bright and is intelligent. Yeah, they, they just do a, yeah, And you're right. They've had they've had that pro experience player as players, so to speak, and then also being around the game long enough to know from the college perspective 
but just really doing their job there. And I think that's why players want to come here because they know they transfer from these big Division I-A schools because they know, hey, I may have a chance. This guy knows the right people. George Small was with Romeo Cornell in an internship, played under him. So I think those are the kind of players. Alvin Wyatt, the list of people that he's had in his program, having to come back around. That's why guys go to schools like this, and I think that's why they get opportunities. Well, you know, part of television, even though the second half wasn't much of a game tonight, is t supposed to be educative, and we hope that you, who, if you listen to tonight's game, learned a little more about these two great schools and a little more about MEAC and the great conference it is. Once again, the final score, Bethune-Cookman 54, North Carolina A&T 17. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's the U. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Charles Arbuckle, I'm Mike Adamley, and all of us who worked on tonight's telecast, good night from Greensboro, North Carolina, as we send you back to our ESPNU studios, Mike Hall and Tom Luganville. Good night, everyone. Good night, Steve.